We are live. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome to the uh, town of East Hampton planning board meeting of December 9th, 2020. I have a couple of announcements, which hopefully I've remembered all of them. Uh, if I forgot any, I will uh, <laughs> say them when I remember them later on. But the first thing uh, I wanted to uh, let everyone know is that this is our last meeting of the year. Uh, we had a meeting scheduled for the 16th, but uh, it doesn't look as though we're going to have sufficient agenda items to warrant uh, everybody interrupting their uh, Christmas shopping. And so we will uh, uh, we'll be wrapping up this year uh, with tonight's meeting. Uh, so I want to just get a couple things out. Uh, first of all, board members, please remember that you need to take your um, your uh, workplace uh, discrimination and uh, well, sorry, workplace bullying and uh, employment discrimination uh, uh, test uh, class uh, by the 11th, by the end of the week, Friday, and you need to get the uh, certification into uh, uh, um, the, the town uh, by. Uh, by then, so if you haven't done already, please do. Also, uh, rem please remember that you need to have four hours of uh, continuing education uh, under your belt before uh, the end of the year. And again, uh, I apologize for our not having our usual uh, festivities surrounding uh, a day of uh, education, but uh, this year you're on your own. And uh, you should have links that we sent uh, to everybody, uh, so you can take classes that are of interest. You went mute. Uh, I'm sorry. You went mute. I couldn't mute? hear you there for a second. You there dipped was, out. There was, no, just, no, was, there was just an internet dropout. Go ahead, Sam. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't slam anything that I knew I did. Anyway, uh, since it is the end of the year. Uh, I think it's appropriate for me to just take a moment to thank all the folks who need to be thanked because, uh, you know, this has been, uh, <laughs> it's so cliche already, but an unusual year, let's just say that, and one full of challenges that no one could have predicted uh, in January, and uh, yet here we are at the end of the year, and, uh, you know, the, uh, at least the process doesn't appear to be any worse for it. Um, I, 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 first and foremost, I have to thank LTV, uh, and Michael and Jason, and, and your whole staff uh, for the incredible effort that, that you've put in. Uh, you know, th th this has almost become routine, doing the meetings this way, and, uh, and, and that, you know, the technology. I, I can't imagine how they had a pandemic 100 years ago without this technology, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad I don't have to think about it. But I'm especially grateful, and I know we all are, to you guys over at LTV. Uh, we give you very little notice of the things that we're going to do, and yet you manage to get us on television and uh, get these meetings out, and you do a great job, and I want to thank you. Thank you, Jeff. It's our pleasure. All these thanks. We're here. They're all on behalf of uh, all seven of us. You're so here. I'm, I'm taking the initiative of thanking on behalf of everyone. Uh, Jody and Nora, Jody Walker and Nora Jacobs, uh, listen. You guys are the most awesome planning board staff uh, I, I could imagine. Uh, the, the one thing I can say is that you know what I'm thinking before I know what I'm thinking <laughs> and before I know what I should be thinking. And I am incredibly grateful for that. Uh, again, just like with LTV, we give you no notice of anything and yet you somehow manage to get it all done and uh, without, without complaint or uh, uh, aggravation. And I thank you. Um, also the planning staff, planning department staff, Joanna and Eric, uh, you listen, you know, you guys have been at the helm of a, of a staff that's the envy uh, certainly of all of Long Island, if not the entire state. Uh, our record as a planning board is, uh, I think, uh, it, 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 it's only as good as it is because we have the support staff of you guys. And this year we added uh, Fabia and Marco, and you guys have fit in magnificently. I, I, I you know, it's funny, you know, <laughs> in a sense. 
my first job at a law school, I, I went to work for somebody and uh, he had a heart attack about two months after I started, uh, which uh, I don't know if it was my fault or not, but um, it was certainly not the initial job that I anticipated when I got hired. And I can only think that uh, you, <laughs> you two guys have uh, gotten an experience that wasn't quite what you expected when you got hired, having to you know, integrate in to the, this uh, planning department staff with, uh, you know, uh, as uh, <laughs> technologically uh, different as you anticipated. But you've done a great job. Uh, and I want to thank, I want to thank all four of you uh, and uh, looking forward to, you know, many more years of this uh, uh, great working relationship. Uh, also, the legal department, uh, Thomas, uh, I, I, you listen, you know, you, you have, I know you have a tough job and, uh, you know, it's uh, keeping us, uh, um, you know, from getting in trouble is not an easy thing to do. Uh, and you guys are do, doing it fantastically. We know of your record in court. Uh, we're always happy to see the results and we're always happy to hear your result, your advice. You may not agree with it, but you take it. Um, and, and as long as I'm talking about lawyers, I, I want to thank the lawyers and the consultants for the applicants who appear before, before us so regularly. Uh, and, you know, this has been a tough year for you guys, too. You know, you, you, put, you put together these uh, presentations for us, and uh, now they're all electronic. And, you know, you've all worked with us uh, in very, through very difficult times, and, uh, and your applications have all, you know, pretty much <laughs> gone well. You may not have gotten the results you wanted, but, again, it's, it's about the technology that we've had to deal with. Thank you all, uh, all, the, all the attorneys who appear before us regularly, all the planning consultants who appear before us regularly uh, for, you know, pitching in and uh, doing what needs to be done. And then finally, this is for me personally. I want to thank uh, my uh, vice chair, Kathy. I want to thank Ed, Lou, Ian, Randy, Sharon, all of you guys. Um, I know that, uh, you know, you're... I ask you to do things again on short notice and without uh, maybe explaining myself entirely well. But uh, to the extent that um, you know this this planning board is uh, um, functions as well as it does, it's it comes down to you in the end. You take this job seriously. You take this job with uh, with good humor. We don't always agree about everything. We usually are con come to a consensus, but there have been any number of applications, I won't name any names, uh, that you know, we didn't all agree on, but uh, you know, once the vote is taken, once the matter is gone through, uh, that's, you know, we we'll on to the next thing. And I know, I very well know, and really the public should know that, uh, you know, there's nothing here that we do quick or slap bash or without, uh, really thinking through everything. And, uh, you know, it's funny, uh, I ran into a, a member of the public, uh, whom I know, uh, who said, boy, you guys met late the other day. And I said, well, yeah, because we had things to do. <laughs> so, uh, well, actually, it wasn't last week, it was a couple of weeks ago. Last week, we got out early. Anyway, I want to thank you personally, on a personal level. Thank all, all, all six of you. Uh, to the extent that I've had any good luck as chairman, it's because of you. So, with that, we will now move Damn. on to... Thanks. Thanks to you. Well, thank you, Ed. I appreciate that. I, I really do. It's, uh, I, I got to say, uh, you know, being chairman of this, is it's a pleasure. I, I enjoy it. It's, it's, it's the, I've been the chairman of any number of, uh, of groups, starting with Cub Scouts, uh, and uh, continuing <laughs> up until today. They didn't call it chairman when I was in the Cub Scouts, but uh, you know, uh, all the way up until now. And this is uh, this is a great group. I, I I love working with you guys. You all take you know you all bring your A game to this, and I I think it's important. So, and the work you do is important. Thank so, you, Sam. You do a great thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right. With that, uh, Marco. It's yours. Uh, this is South Essex Corner. We have uh, Andrew. I see Andrew Strong. He's the, uh, you're, you're from the applicant. 
So you are here? Um, I am. I'm here. Very yep. well. Welcome, Andrew. Uh, I just have something I want to say beforehand. The uh, applicant's representative is my son-in-law, but I uh, feel that I can uh, fairly and impartially consider the merits of this application. Very good. Okay. Marco, you're on. Okay. Uh, So everyone should have the, the share screen up, I see, right? Okay. So an application has been made to construct a two-story, 2,000 square foot building with a first floor retail and deck, a second floor apartment with a porch, and an unfinished basement on a vacant parcel located on South Essex Street in downtown Montauk. The parcel is currently vegetated and is zoned central business. The first floor proposes two dry retail uses, which are permitted uses under CB zoning and are both 1,000 square feet. The second floor proposes a 1,049 square foot apartment with a roofed porch of 941 square feet. The unfinished basement consists of 1,875 square feet and the front deck is 240 square feet. So the proposed project will require substantial grading along South Euclid Avenue for the proposed sidewalk and parking in the street right away. Uh, an area of concern that the planning board and applicant may wish to keep in mind is that the area around the telephone pole uh, located off the southeastern corner of the property, which is where my mouse is currently located on the bottom of the screen. Um, this that particular area. That would be southwest corner, wouldn't it? You're right, Southwest, my mistake. Um, southwestern corner of the property. Uh, this particular area and the front of the building along South Euclid Avenue is proposed to be lowered and should have similar slopes and angles to the neighboring lot. Um, the planning department has noted that similar properties nearby have encountered difficulties in providing proper elevations, uh, proper elevation levels that are ADA compliant and coherent in part due to the natural topography. The proposed sidewalk near the western property may also encounter issues with grading via uh, given their height uh, above the neighboring lot. A retaining wall may be considered and possible drainage structures to ensure that the walkway is even and will avoid rain runoff to the properties below. And I believe this is referring to this sidewalk here. That's where my mouse is going over. It is recommended that the applicant provide a set of plans that detail topography, including a sidewalk profile that demonstrates consistent slope angles, the type of proposed pavement for the front and rear parking, and propose an existing spot elevations. The planning department suggests that the proposed plan also note the use of pink tinted concrete for the sidewalks along South Essex Street and South Euclid Avenue to match with the existing nearby properties and to keep the downtown character as recommended by the downtown Montauk Central Business Study. So the planning department has not uh, received comments from the Chief, Marsh, uh, Chief Fire Marshal regarding fire safety or ADA compatibility at the time of review. The planning department notes that two parking spaces designated for ADA parking should be designed to be close to be as close as possible to the entranceway or ramp. As proposed, the two spots are located in areas that will extend the length of the pathway considerably. Given the current topography and layout, the patrons would need to go uphill and around the corner of the property before moving back downhill towards the entrance. Details of an accessible route to the parking space, for example, curb cuts, should also be provided. The applicant should demonstrate clearly on their site plan that the designated handicap area will be as close as to the will be as close to the entranceway as possible will have curb cuts to sidewalk and will not exceed the maximum slope restriction on ADA accessibility. So currently the applicant proposes three dry wells in the Eastern portion of the property to help mitigate rain runoff from South Essex Street and flooding on the property. Um, in the rear of the building along the Northern side is a designated town alleyway that is currently used by neighboring lots for commercial uses. It is, a dirt, is it, it is a dirt path that is sloped and has the potential to pool water in the northwestern corner of the property and divert rain runoff onto neighboring uh, properties. 
The planning department recommends that the applicant provide drainage structures, drainage calculations, and the possibility of a dry well to ensure proper rain mitigation. The alleyway appears to have sufficient room for a dry well with a 20 foot separation from the septic system. The proposed site plan is located within Natural Resources Special Permit Jurisdiction and will require a Natural Resources Special Permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals. Any clearing, grading, building, or placement of any structure within 150 feet of a wetland will necessitate a Natural Resources Special Permit as required under Chapter 255-420. The proposed building is within 150 feet, but over 100 feet from a nearby freshwater wetland located to the northeast. The building, uh, the building has been placed on the western side of the lot and maintains the 10-foot setback for commercial properties as required by the town's dimensional regulations. The three dry wells proposed on the property are within the 100-foot setback from wetlands. It would be up to the discretion of the Zoning Board of Appeals if the dry wells would necessitate a variance. The septic system has been proposed roughly 130 feet away from the wetlands and is situated along the western side of the property. On the chapter 255-430 of the town code, a septic system is required to have a minimum of 150 foot setback from wetlands. As proposed, the proposed septic system will necessitate a wetland setback variance. The proposed survey's test hole indicates that no groundwater was encountered at 25 feet. The planning board may wish to discuss sending preliminary comments to the Zoning Board of Appeals. In chapter 255 11, uh, chapter 255-11-45 of the town code uh, requires 13 off-street parking spaces for the project. The alleyway in the rear of the property is presently open and unimproved and is proposed to provide access to eight parking spaces. The applicant will be responsible for ensuring proper access to and improvements to the back alleyway as has been conducted with other as has been conducted with other sites um, bordering a town alleyway. A two foot wide road widening easement is also proposed along the alleyway that will reduce the length of the spaces in the rear by two feet, resulting in a, in a design that is effectively smaller than required by the town code detailed in chapter 255-11-43. The town code states that the parking spaces shall be marked off with a minimum, of, minimum width of 10 feet and a minimum length of 15 of 18 feet or a minimum width of nine feet and a minimum length of 20 feet. The applicant should revise the proposed access easement and revise their parking spaces to be conforming to the town code. Five 10 foot by 18 foot spaces are proposed in the front of the parcel, which will require variances from the Zoning Board of Appeals due to their positioning in the right of way and are not off street as required by the town code. However, proposing parking spaces within the right of way will mirror the existing conditions on neighboring properties and may be the most desired aesthetic. Of the five proposed spaces, two are for ADA accessibility and have been noted earlier to extend the length to the main entrance considerably. On the proposed site plan, it is unclear what type of pavement is used for the front and rear and should be clarified on the site plan and a pavement detail provided. It should be noted that the proposed unfinished basement should be labeled for utilities and storage only for the purposes of determining the appropriate number of parking spaces. In total, the proposed project will require a total of 13 off-street spaces provided the unfinished basement is designated for utilities and storage only. It is unclear if the applicant will meet the parking requirement with the spaces that are conforming to the town code. The applicant's landscaping plan, um, which I think, this one here. Uh, the applicant's landscaping plan consists of native plantings with shrubs along the walkways and trees along South Essex Street. The applicant has noted that a dumpster enclosure has been illustrated on the landscaping plan, but not on the site plan. The enclosure should be illustrated in the revised site plan and should comply with the board's policy requiring six foot screening for dumpsters. The planning department notes that the quantity of plants uh, proposed do not appear to match the quantity illustrated. For example, one flowering dogwood is listed in the legend. However, a total of three are illustrated. 
Um, other plantings are either illustrated as more than the quantity listed or less. The landscaping in between the tree plantings and on, on the eastern half of the property is unclear. Uh, the planning board may wish to seek may wish to ask the may wish to ask the applicant specify if it will be planted with grass or layered with mulch. The planning department recommends that that the proposed street trees of flowering dogwood, um, or known as Cornus Florida and Acer rubum red maple, uh, will be the height of eight to ten feet at planting. The applicant should revise their landscaping plan to also include the proposed number of plantings. The applicant's lighting plan has proposed six light fixtures, two in the front and four in the rear of the building. The applicant's plans, uh, the applicant's plan indicates that the light fixtures will be mounted at a height of five feet. However, the planning department would recommend that the height be revised to six feet provide, to provide sufficient lighting for the entranceways. It should be noted that the proposed elevation drawings appear to have the fixtures at slightly over six feet by entranceways. It is recommended that the applicant submit manufacturer specification sheets for the proposed fixture, as well as provide the additional details listed below, including the proposed, mount, uh, proposed height of mounting. It appears that the fixture is fully shielded and is below the maximum lumen levels as recommended by town as recommended by the town. Um, it is unclear if the fixtures will be above 3000 Kelvin, which is, which is the maximum level allowed and how far in measurements of foot candles with the fixtures illuminate the property. Ultimately, the proposed project will require approval from the ARB and an application should be submitted to this agency as soon as possible if the applicants have not already done so. The building is proposed to have cedar sink cedar shingle siding and a dark gray standing seam metal roof. It is noted on other projects that the board has favored traditional, traditional designs and materials for downtown Montauk. The proposed project will require approval from the Suffolk County Department of Health Services. The applicants are encouraged to submit an application to this agency as soon as possible. They have not already done so. As per chapter 210-3-2, an IA low nitrogen system would be required for the project. The sanitary plan indicates that an IA low nitrogen system is proposed and will have a proposed sanitary flow of 285 gallons per day, which is below the maximum allowable 300 gallons per day for the project site. A special permit will be required as per town code, chapter 255-5-50, specific standards and safeguards, um, apartments within commercial structures. The site plan proposes the construction of an apartment on the second floor above with the proposed retail stores. The apartment meets the general floor area requirements, which is at least 400, 450 square feet and no more than 1,200 square feet and has a separate staircase entrance to the, on the northern side of the building. The project is a type two action pursuant to SECRA and chapter 128 of the town code. Um, Moving forward to the title of plans, uh, the proposed lighting, sanitary, and floor plans submitted do not reflect the title of the application and should be revised to state the proposed title, the proposal's title. And for site plan review, permits and variances that would be required as listed as natural resources special permit for construction near fresh water wetlands, variance from wetland setback for the proposed septic system, uh, parking in the right of way variance. Uh, in conclusion, the proposal will require substantial grading to ensure that they are in keeping with the neighborhood community character while providing ADA accessibility. A natural resources special permit and a variance for parking in the right of way will be needed. The board should consider potential concerns with drainage and rain runoff within the town alleyway and proposed and the proposed parking. Well, thank you again, Marco. The thoroughness of this report is fantastic. Uh, and really a, a, a great piece of work. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Strong, it is your application, so the floor is now yours. Hey, thanks very much. Uh, and thanks for that uh, uh, very comprehensive overview, Marco. I'll, I'll try to keep things relatively brief and just answer some of the questions that were raised. There's a couple things that I just wanted to um, touch on. Uh, is a two-story 
2,000 square foot uh, building with a 2,000 square foot footprint, that is. Um, so the proposed footprint is about 2,800 square feet less than what's allowed. And a lot of the reason is because that site is constrained by wetlands that uh, Marco talked about um, to the northeast is across the street. Um, but that's why everything is kind of slid and sighted uh, as far away from there as possible. Um, and we've tried to keep the, the main dry wells in between the building and the, and the wetlands. Um, uh, we um, are, sorry, I'm getting some, some company in here. Uh, we've made an application to the, uh, to the zoning board um, and we are waiting on an application to the ARB um, in part uh, following discussion tonight from, from this board that you know, the, the rough framework of what we've put together um, seems like it's coherent and um, uh, works. Um, just jumping in, there are two uses to the, the dry retail. Um, the basement will be unfinished mechanical and utility space, um, but it will be unfinished and um, uh, we're happy to label to label it something to that effect, um, and that that's where I'm comfortable in doing this the overview of this project and just to go right into to some of the questions and issues that that Marco uh, raised. Um, so, uh, Chairman, I can I can be directed by you, or I can just just jump in. No, that'll be fine. Uh, let, 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 let's uh, let's have um, uh, Ed do the. Uh, Presentation and uh, we can go through the uh, the board and uh, I suppose if the board has any specific direct questions we can pose them to you as we're going. Uh, before Ed, before you get started, I just want to let uh, the the uh, the public know because it's almost seven o'clock that we have uh, and I should have said this at the top of the meeting. Uh, we have uh, two site plans on for today. Obviously, we're in one of them now. The other one. Um, the uh, Cohen Artist Studio uh, will do after we come back from the four uh, public hearings that we have set for seven o'clock. And uh, just Kathy, so you know, the first one of those is at Cabana Grove and I'm recused on that. So you'll take the ball uh, for that one. Okay, very good. Uh, I'll do some emails while you're doing that. Um, okay, Ed. Please pick up, uh, if you will, on uh, South Essex Corner. Yep, sure. Uh, thanks, Andrew, for the overview. Uh, Marco, great, uh, great commentary. Appreciate the thoroughness. Um, you and I had a chance to talk about this while I was on site the other day. Um, Andrew, a question for you. So, what, what, what is your proposal for what happens uh, to the area to the east of the building, between the building and South Essex? I know you scooted it over to, to the west to uh, avoid wetlands issues. But what, what happens with that part of the plot? You know, I saw the landscape plan, but what's, how will it be used, do you see? Um, so I think th some of that will, will uh, if you, some of that will remain uh, vegetated. Um, that, and you can see that I think on the septic plan, there's a little line of where the clearing is gonna be. Um, the, the orientation of the building is gonna be to the south. So the entry, you know, is all coming off of Euclid Street. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I suspect that around the, um, the landscaping will, the, um, the applicant will want to put mulch uh, and it will be, you know, uh, a mulched area the, where the um, native vegetation has been cleared. Um, so, uh, you know, we can... We can firm that up with the landscaping plan. I know that's something that was raised and will come mm -hmm. to, um, but we're certainly happy to make the the numbers match the plants that we've that we've um, shown. And if um, uh, if uh, what we like, we can show you know how we propose to use that that space. Right. Uh, yeah, this is the map, and you can kind of see. Um, I hope, yeah, um, just on that. Corner. It, it's tricky because it's been rotated here, mm -hmm. uh, but you can see on that Euclid and South Essex corner, the the line, the clearing edge is there, uh, and it kind of follows around and comes back into the property on the that I think that's the north side. Um, mm -hmm. so it's it's oriented. 
Yeah, I think well, I, I, the Essex is sort of is the east side, I think, right? North is to the right. And this... Yeah, unfortunately, this is the way it's rotated. I can't really. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, yeah, no, I was just, I was just curious, Andrew. You know what, what that would look there for a couple of reasons. One is, um, you know, because it is a bit of a, it's a bit of a, it's quite a steep hill as you turn onto Euclid from Essex, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if if there's some better visibility as you round that corner, particularly since there'll be head in. Does propose to be head in parking pretty, you know, shortly after you make that turn. It would, for sort of safety reasons, it'd be great to gain some perhaps better visibility in there. Um, you know, I know there's there's a lot of uh, vegetation in there. You're you're planning on adding more. Uh, you know, it's always a tricky situation, and you know, because of the amount of grading that has to be done, in particular in this case, to to retain what's natural. Um, so I, I think we're going to have to. Be talking about what that reveg plan looks like in there because clearly you're going to have to be grading, removing a lot of what's there, creating better visibility. There's a lot of work to be done on the landscape side, I think. Okay. Um, one other question I, I had on the on that the other the actual landscape plan, which Marco had up earlier, I just noticed this uh, when he had it up. Are there two two parking spaces that are on Essex Street? If you go. Uh, uh, no, I think the parking is all okay. Clear. Yeah. Oh, I could have sworn one of the one of the one of the uh, plans that you showed showed uh, head-in parking off of Essex. I guess I was mistaken. I don't see them here. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. So so uh, listen. I, I think that um, you know this this is I believe the fourth application of this type that I've been party to. Uh, since I've been on the board for the last three years, I mean, this block the, on this block of South Euclid, and you know, I think it needs to be kind of cleaned up and uh, made a bit more coherent than currently is. There are a lot of challenges on this block, right? The the hill, the the tell you know the utility poles being essentially in the parking spaces, mm -hmm. um, and you know, particularly challenges around making each of the buildings on the north side of South Euclid. Uh, ADA compliant. You know, we had big, big challenges with the property two or three doors down, mm -hmm. and I think you're going to have them again um, on on this property. Um, Ed, if I I just mean to, don't mean to. Well, I have interrupted. Um, the uh, parking spaces. I, I see what you're talking about. If you look on the exterior lighting plan, she drawing number A010. It appears that on that particular. Uh, hmm. uh, there we go. Warren, it, it does look like there are two parking oh. spaces on Essex Street. I don't know if that's intentional or not, or if I, or if I'm misreading that, but it, they look like it. Yeah, that's the one I saw. Yeah, I, 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 I think the the parking from the site plan is is the controlling parking here. So okay, um, you know that we'll certainly get that. Um, discrepancy resolved um but i i um i take the point with the landscaping just in terms of direction i i guess i hear you saying you know be thoughtful about you know ensuring you have the right amount of landscaping uh and and be thoughtful about the visibility from when you turn the corner mm -hmm. and um i guess that you know that that is a delicate balance to strike um it is. i don't know if you have any any suggestions on, on which way to err? <laughs> um, if, if, you know, um, if you do, we'd, we'd happily take that suggestion and, and um, put it into the landscape plan. Yeah, no, I, th I think the visibility question, I don't, I don't think you need to go back that far, um, you know, cause there's, you know, a pretty, pretty deep right of way there as well as you turn on to South Euclid. But um, yeah, I, I don't actually have any specific recommendations. It's just something to be mindful of. And I'm Not sure your architect will be able to come up with some some good ideas for that and still kind of you know maintain mm -hmm. um, as much natural vegetation there as possible uh, but as i was saying i think you know it's it's really important for us to really look at this block comprehensively um, you know it, this is sort of right out of the montauk central business plan um, you know to really develop this commercially and we've you know we're going to have a number i think the lot next to this to to the west Next to the between you and the potting shed will probably be developed at some point as well. The the, the plot across the street has a, uh, a sort of an active building permit, I believe. 
uh, and we approved you know, two other projects down, down, down the road as well, all of which have a very similar kind of feeling, kind of a sort of a longish, narrow, narrow fronted building that goes sort of long into the, into the site. And I think that's fine. I think that's a fine look. But, you know, the, the major challenge here is going to be making sure that the, there's connectivity with the sidewalks, which already have a major disruption a couple of properties down. Um, making sure that the, that the parking, that the head in parking here is safe um, and making sure that, you know, with these, with these grade challenges that you're able to satisfy, you know, ADA access would be the things I'd really be mindful of, plus the landscaping issues that, that I mentioned earlier. And then, of course, all the, the sort of zoning considerations and that, uh, that uh, Marco brought up. I would, I would support uh, a letter in support of uh, an NSRP and, uh, you know, an access easement to the ZBA. I think it's important that we, that this, this is going to be developed. I think it needs to be developed in, in the right way. And I think having that is going to be, you know, essential to making this project work. So that's what I've got. Okay. Thank you very much, Ed. Okay, uh, we'll continue on your side. So uh, Lou, if you would. Uh, I'm, Overall, I'm I'm in favor of uh, the project the way it's laid out. I just have a couple of questions. Um, what now? The entrance to the building is on the north side of the building, right, Andrew? Well, I so it's it's off of South Euclid Avenue. That so the south. That's oh, the so what what is that stoop and landing that's on the north side there? Over here. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm pointing with my mouse and then you guys can see it. Um, the, so that, that, I think that's a, uh, a, a small deck and, and, um, let's see if it, if it's on there. And yeah, the, and it's the access to the, to the apartment. Oh, uh, so that's, it says that's stoop, doesn't it? Yeah, it says stoop. What is that? And then stairs to the second floor, that would be the entrance to the building for the second to floor. the apartment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And what is, the, what is the stoop? What is that? Um, I think it, I, I can get you a precise answer, but I, I think that it's just a, um, an area to be outside um, from, from the um, apartment. But if you give me a, a minute, I'll, I can give you a. Um, yeah, there it is. You know, I, I'm from the Bronx and stoop means you know, an entrance to. <laughs> it's handball. <laughs> I believe it's referring to this, this right here, this little, this little. Entry. Is that an entryway yeah. to the building? Is that like a back door? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And um, so. Marco, you said that you think that there's a, a long distance from the ADA designated spots to the entrance. What, where would you recommend that those spots be moved to that, so that they'd be closer? Um, what would be helpful if they were located, um, I guess, further east? So right now where they're situated is down here, which is like the lowest elevation, and elevation goes up along this way. Oh, I see. So, possibly here could be an option. Um, we have no way's... problem moving the the handicap parking to, to make it more accessible. I think that's a good point. You know, it, it's easy to do. Um, okay, and then I had a question. There's a couple of uh, doors down. I I don't remember the business that's there, a salon or something. It's the one next to the potting shed. And they have they have like a pink uh, parking area. It's like a sidewalk area, cemented area where parking is uh, allowed for the building. <clears throat> and then there's a retaining wall next to that building. So uh, it would be uh, east of that building. So would would you be doing the same kind of thing with these parking spaces as well as perhaps do you think it, you would need a retaining wall on the west side of the property because of I'm, the slope? Yeah, I mean, I, I noted um, the, I, uh, the comments by the, the planner. We, um, we don't plan on having one 
and that's based on our engineer and the engineering. I mean, I, 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 um, I take the point we're alive to it, but, um, you know, my, my general instinct is to avoid those hard structures, particularly when you're, when you're in proximity to wetlands, but, um, but I think more importantly, we're, we're following the guidance of the engineer, uh, on, on what's, um, uh, appropriate there. I'm happy to put the question to him though. Yeah, I mean, it's not a big deal. I, you know, it's not, it, it wouldn't be a terribly high retaining wall to the point where maybe it's not even needed if it's done, if the regrading is done in such a way that uh, would eliminate the need. But I was just wondering whether or not you were thinking of doing that. Um, speaking of um, regrading how um uh, what exactly uh, you know it's regrading and drainage is what i'm concerned of and marco pointed this out in his report uh are you are you uh prepared to put some kind of drainage system so that you prevent flooding on the uh western part of the you know down slope from the from that uh from from the eastern part to the western part uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're we're prepared to put, you know, to make sure that all um, gutters and leaders are going and directed into the ground um, from any structure. Um, and then, you know, we have the the three dry wells that are to the east of the of the property, but where there's space to put them. Um, just I, not not to derail that point, but I, I was a little confused with where an additional dry where the planner's recommendation for an additional dry well could go uh, in the alley based on where the septic system is uh, and based on the fact that we don't own the alley. Um, I, I, I just didn't see any space for it. Um, and so the that- The septic's not in the alley. It, well, it, it borders the, so the septic's to the north of the structure, right? And then just that boundary line uh, is on the, the survey. I see, you know, alley 20 foot wide open. And so that that's where I'm I'm confused where a, an additional dry well would go. Well, the, the septic system is not um, in the alleyway. Um, just trying to pull up a better aerial. So uh, you know, the, the, the it could be possible that the dry well can go in the alley, like roughly around here. This would. Yeah, you you just um, have an engineer do a standard um, road profile for the alleyway and have, um, you know, generally they'd use round uh, catch basins uh, in the alleyway. Um, it shouldn't be that hard to do. Well, I, I guess my, 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 my question is maybe a, a, a stupid question, but I don't think, I'm not sure who, where the ownership for that alleyway lies. Right? With the town. It's with the town. Okay. I, I mean, I guess I'll look, to, to Thomas about, you know, about, yeah. you know. Yeah, it is, it, um, it is a standard thing that, that we've done. And in fact, I could give you examples of other properties in downtown Montauk um, and show how we, we've handled it. Um, you know, the applicant would just have their engineer do a standard road, uh, road profile design for the alleyway that would include any drainage that might be needed. And as is obvious that everyone's noted here by the grades, um, you're gonna need something to catch the runoff from the alleyway, which we would recommend be improved with asphalt. So all the water's gonna run directly off of it. But it, it's a standard thing and we can get you examples. Okay, great. Great, and I'm happy to talk to the engineer about, about you know, the, the drainage profile there and, and um, address it in the alley, that's fine. Who owns the property uh, north of the alley? I, I, I don't know. That, or is that a developable lot? I mean, I, I saw that there was some commercial activity I, on it. Are right? you referring to this lot here? Yeah. Um, well, I, I will, I will, both lots, I guess. That one and the one to the west of it. Are those two separate lots? These yeah. two lots here? Yes. Yeah. They're and two there's, separate there's lots. There's activity on that western side one there yeah. there were there was uh, uh firewood that was being stored there and there were some vehicles that were 
in that lot. I don't know what's going on there, who's using it and for what purpose. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I can um, do a little more research into that and, and get you that information. I, I can tell you based on GIS, um, I believe the eastern one, the one directly to the north of the subject parcel, uh, and Andrew, maybe you can verify this, but is owned by the applicant, um, Mr. O'Connell. Uh, under GIS, the, under our GIS records, that's what it says. And then the narrower lot to the west is owned by a gentleman by the name of Adamowitz. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's all I have. I think, you know, the hurdles here are the variances that you need to get, Andrew, with the zoning board. Uh, but that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. Ian? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, I think Mark did a great job of, of giving you a roadmap. I think generally this is a, uh, um, you know, I didn't touch on a lot of things, but um, one of the most important things for me is the parking uh, and, and the safety of it. And I think Ed, you know, pointed that out in terms of plantings. I think that's something that sometimes gets overlooked with tall plantings. And, and my advice, Andrew, would be to make sure that, you know, the plantings are low enough where it would be a visual you know, obstruction for those those head-in parking spaces. Um, I also worry a little bit about the sidewalk in the front, you know, with head-in parking spaces going right up to the sidewalk. I, I can't tell if you have stops there, but I, I think that there should be something um, so that people aren't walking right in front of where a car would be pulling into. Um, and, and I think that we should involve the, the highway superintendent there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm inclined to, you know, be in favor of allowing those parking spaces there because I think this is a classic case where, you could fit parking on your property, but in an attempt to keep everything away from those wetlands and to, you know, match the neighboring properties, what you're doing makes sense. But, you know, I just want to make sure that it's safe. So um, I think the highway superintendent should weigh in there and, and I would, you know, give a great deal of weight to um, his opinion. Um, but otherwise, if, if, you know, the safety issues are addressed to his satisfaction, um, you know, and you're conscious of the plantings, I would, I would support the, the parking layout. Um, you know, as everyone pointed out, grading is a real issue here um, and drainage. I think um, the dry well in the alleyway makes sense if you get the separation you need from the, uh, the septic. Uh, but obviously, you're going to have to contain your water, you know, from flowing onto the neighboring property, um, which I'm sure that your engineer can accomplish. Uh, by that same token, though, I think because it is such a steep slope, you're actually downhill and across the street from the wetlands which means I think I agree with Ed that NSRP, um, you know, I would be in favor of. I think your design here makes a lot of sense um, trying to keep the structures away from that. And in doing so, your dry wells are within uh, NSRP regulations. But, but again, I think it's the best design for this, this property. Along the lines of grading, obviously ADA is very important. Um, the location of that handicap space, I'm open to. Um, Want to make sure that if we do move it more towards that intersection, that we're very conscious of the safety aspect there. Um, and I think that the fire marshal should weigh in there about, um, you know, the, the, the strict rules in terms of shortest route and where the best place for that, those parking spaces are. Um, and that's, that's basically it. I think, you know, it's a good plan that I support. And I think, like I said before, that Marco did a great job of giving you a roadmap for things that, um, you know, need to be addressed, but it's a good start. Thank you very much, Ian. Kathy, you're all right. Um, so I only have a couple of things to add um, uh, to what everyone else has said. Um, uh, I, I too have notated that Steve Lynn should be consulted in terms of the parking. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, uh, and the fire marshal about the ADA uh, spaces, it was my thinking, Marco, can you pull up the... Uh, uh, the uh, site plan, please, instead of the, isn't this, yeah, that the um, handicap parking could be moved to the east, um, you know, where Marco was talking about er earlier to make it e more easily accessible. And toward that end, I might, I would advise you to get a recommendation from the um, ADA advisory committee, we have one that sometimes weighs in on applications for us and they may be able to give you some really important feedback. Um, 
Um, let's see. Uh, you know, I support the NRSP. Um, I, you know, I, I think that you've done a good job here to locate the development as far away from the wetlands as you can. And I know it comes as a surprise that you're meant to provide drainage in the alleyway, but that's something that has to be done. And I think um, your engineer will understand that. Um, one of the questions that I had, because one of our responsibilities is to buffer commercial uses from residential um, properties, which across the street is a residential property. And you have the dumpster, it's not on this, sorry, I don't know which one it's on. <clears throat> is the dumpster on this plan? Can we see it? <clears throat> the dumpster, <coughs> I beg your pardon, um, is facing the east. And it, se it seems to me that's on the you know, residential side. Um, and it's likely the plan to have a truck come in and you know, uh, empty the refuse from the alleyway. But I would try to see if you couldn't work that around to a different place and maybe put it, if you're gonna swap out those uh, handicapped spaces further east, you might could put it down on the west, you know, on the southwest corner where it would still, uh, a truck would still have access and uh, you could screen it. I know it's the entrance there, but you might be able to screen it a little better there so that it's not on the um, residential side of the street. And then regarding the uh, plantings, um, you know, I, I think you've got a good start here, but I would do as much as I could to uh, buffer the um, residents from the commercial use, you know, on the east side there of the property. But I think everybody else has uh, taken care of all the other questions that I had on this. Great. Okay, Randy. Randy? Randy? Randy muted? Where's Randy? Randy? Randy, you're Are you Randy. muted, Randy? Randy? Randy, you're you're muted. Muted. if I could just talk, this is Mike from LTV, everybody. Randy is not well, muted, but for some reason, not. his microphone is not working. Randy, do you have a okay. mic, Mike? You can unplug and plug back in. I don't know what type of computer you have. You may have to hold up signs, Randy. <laughs> Try again, Randy. <laughs> Randy. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good job. You're all right. Okay. So, uh, I the the big challenge on this one, as others have said, is the uh, the drain grading and drainage. And um, I'm wondering if we should have our consulting engineer take a look at the. I think we need a we really need a, a comprehensive grading and drainage plan that includes the alleyway and the parking spaces in the road in the right of way and shows uh, you know this this has a 10 a 10 foot drop in elevation from north to south and there's going to be a lot of uh, momentum for water to move south on this site, move down the alleyway, move down South Essex and South Euclid. Um, and I don't, I, I know we were talking about uh, gutters and leaders into the dry wells, but I don't see that on the elevation. So we, we also wanna make sure that the, the rooftop is uh, put into these dry wells. Um, other than that, let's see. Um, I wondered if the um, the septic. It looks like this. I wondered if the health department. It looks like the septic system is very close to the building. So I'm just wondering if that meets the health department requirement for separation from the. <clears throat> 
from the building. Oh, I see. It is further than I thought. Okay. So it's actually the sidewalk that is, uh, that, look, that looks fine. Um, the, there's that one light, which is called out. I don't, I don't know exactly what Marco said about it, but there's a light on the second floor deck, I think, which is uh, mounted five feet above. Uh, and I wondered if that, how is that light gonna look from street level? Are those? Are you speaking of these lights here? I guess that's it. It shows up in the lighting plan. Uh, are, you, are you referring to the ones upstairs in, in, in the second floor? Yeah, I, I I just wondered if the how those are going to, you know, how how can you feel the light that's it's going to be what uh, 15 feet in the air, pretty much, up there. Um, maybe that's something the applicant can comment on. Uh, these are the lighting designs that they have submitted, but uh, I I can't really make a good judgment call on it. I I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. So, but we can just we can just ask that they meet the. Well, yes, um, I, I don't think there's um, any particular uh, point by point foot candle measurements that I can uh, see off this lighting plan. So I'm not quite sure okay. uh, what the answer would it be. Just, it just seems that those, those second floor lights are going to be especially visible. And we're happy to submit cut sheets for the, for the lighting. I think, you know, that, okay. that give, I think, Marco, the, the tools to make that assessment. And, you know, some of those, particularly on the backside where you, you take entry into the apartment, I mean, I think are kind of non-negotiable for safety. I mean, we can obviously change the type of lighting, but, you know, that, that's where some of yeah. the living. Um, so that, that's just something that probably went into the, that, that, that's something that went into our planning. Um, but I think getting cut sheets to Mark Lighting will give everybody the, the lay of the land in terms of what we're okay. Um, yeah, I think the, there's there's an, a number of things that suggest maybe a slightly so, smaller building, like the you know the two foot road widening easement cutting into the parking, and um, so I don't know if this if it could be more conforming if if the building was a little bit smaller. I think you've already shrunk it once, but uh, just just even a two foot reduction in the in the building size would make all those parking spaces on the northwest side conforming. You wouldn't have to get a variance there. But. I think we can make it conforming without shrinking the building. Uh, okay, and just, you know the building we're already pretty pretty far under our allowable and. Um, you know, I, 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 we are trying to put our sort of best good faith foot forward here with a, with a plan that, that we, that we want rather than one that, you know, is maybe a little bigger than normal that we're ready to shrink. Um, I, that's all I'll say, but if, if we can't make it work, then, then we'll revisit that. Um, and I, I take the point. And then the final thing is that, uh, that field on, on the South Essex side, that's going to be um, sort of the open space on the lot. Um, well, yeah. yeah, I just will say I, I suspect, and this is this is my just my suspicion that that when we go in front of the ZBA, you know, Brian Frank is going to have some very clear uh, feelings about what should be planted there because that's the okay. area that's in between the wetlands and the building. And okay. So I would also say, you know, if if there are things that you really want. Um, you, you, if you're writing a letter to the ZBA uh, in support of the project, which I would be delighted for to have, it may be worth mentioning, hey, there's this visibility issue that we want you to consider uh, so that we don't get a planning plan from the, the ZBA that, that you know, is colliding with what the, um, what, what's best for the, for the planning board. Yeah, I, I, mean, I say that, and not to tell you to do it, but to put, yeah. to put it out there. Um, so that side, that side of the lot, 
and that side of the building are going to be very visible. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Thank you, Randy. And that was it? Yep. Thanks, Sharon, please. Yeah, I think it's all been Thank set. <laughs> good job, everyone. I mean, I think that he has a good direction to go. Um, I, too, think the biggest challenge is going to be the grading and the drainage. Um, it is quite a steep hill there. Um, but, you know, he's gotten direction from everyone, and I don't really have much to add. Thank you. I'm with you on that, Sharon. Let me mm -hmm. just roll right into the questions. Uh, should the applicant provide a set of plans that details the slopes and color of the sidewalks, type of payment for parking, and propose and existing spot elevations. I'm going to presume that nobody objects to that. Do we, Sam, do we, uh, how does the board feel about having our consulting engineer take a look at the final grading and drainage plan? Uh, you know, I, in this case, it might be a really good idea to do that. I, I, I uh, let me think. Let, remind me when, when I get through the questions. Okay. Because if we, because if we hit it, because there's a lot of questions here. Marco gave us a lot to chew over. Um, the, uh, if, if it's not in there, let's mention that because I, I, I agree with you, Randy, in, the, in view of the, the, the slopes that we're dealing with and the tight uh, tightness of the site, it might be a real good idea. Should the applicant revise the site plan to provide ADA access as close to the main entrance? And I think he's already indicated, um, council's already indicated that they were interested in that. Should the applicant provide additional drainage structures calculations and the possibility of a dry well to mitigate potential flooding from the town alleyway and sidewalk? Mm -hmm. Should the planning board discuss, the, does anybody have any objection to that one, by the well, way? Kind of all part of a comprehensive grading and drainage plan. Right. That's right. Yeah. Anybody else? That's right. Ed? No, I think Randy's making a good point. It's, it's really all part of the same thing, those, those mm -hmm. questions. I don't know if that's a, the foregone conclusion is that's the solution, but a, a comprehensive plan is needed. Yeah, something. Uh, all right, let me, um, well, this next one is, should the planning board discuss the future use of the town alleyway? It seems like a conversation that, uh, well, how does anybody feel about that, about, about our getting, in, getting into that at this point? Well, it does look like the neighbor to the, Southwest is using that alleyway to get in and out with his trucks. If I'm just wondering at... if it's not premature for us to get into that at this point. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anybody, Ed, how do you feel about that? Yeah, was, Mark, Mark and I were actually talking about this. I think it might be premature to get into it, but it feels like an issue that does need to be dealt with at some point. Yeah, maybe not right this minute because the applicant's going to have to come back to us with a lot of other stuff. Yeah, and the and the alley, it's an important issue, especially because it's gonna the parking is so dependent upon the alleyway. But yeah, uh, you know, just Sam, uh, I noticed when I when I uh, took a look at the property a couple of times, both times there there was this huge uh, trailer that you would hitch up to a uh, uh, to a truck that carried maybe some of that wood that I saw in that other property and that was sitting right in the alleyway uh so who's ever using that other property for whatever purposes some commercial use they're making uh very good use of that alleyway with very large equipment and and trucks and and that kind of thing so that it would you know i don't know if that kind of thing could be could continue uh if you're going to have people parking uh, for, you know, going into the, this building. So I think it's important what happens to that alleyway. I'm not sure that we need to determine that right now, but eventually I think that's going to be an issue. And it also sounds like it's an issue that involves more than just this applicant. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, all right. Well, all right, let's put that on the shelf then, you know, for a little while. Should the, zone, should the planning board provide their preliminary comments to the Zoning Board of Appeals? I heard a lot of sentiment for that. Do I hear any sentiment against that? No, I would, just say, I would just say that I think Andrew made a really good point that, that the one thing I would want to say is just for them to be cognizant of um, sight lines. Okay. With whatever plantings they're going to. How, how should we um, address this with the ZBA? Uh, does anybody have any specific comment that they want the ZBA to hear from us? 
Um, Ed, I'm going to turn to you again on this. Um, you know, I, I kind of got the idea that we were most most of us commented that we were in support of an NSRP for this. Okay, yeah, and I, I think, think that's important direction to give them. Uh, I think Ian's comment is a good one. You know, to add that you know the vegetation piece is important to us, but we need to be aware of sight lines. Okay, we can. Yeah, I think you know my my view of it is that if we are going to provide comments to the ZBA, they should be very specific and very uh, brief. And uh, I think that if we if we keep it to just you know there was support on the board for an NSRP, and we also asked the ZBA to consider the uh, sight lines. So I think we could get a, a letter that I I, I wouldn't have it. Well, it's an, a it's an it's an NRSP with uh, a variance for the septic system. That's right. I mean that the, the septic system variance there, there's nowhere on the on the lot that the septic conforms without a variance. So, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm in the it, Okay, all right, so we'll, we'll get something together on that also. J Jody, you, you, got, you got a note on that, please? Yes. Thanks, Jody. Because <laughs> uh, I know I'll forget. Um, should the applicant revise their unfinished basement to contain a notation that it is, quote, for utilities and storage only? And uh, I, think, yeah. I don't think anyone's yes. objected to that. So the applicant provides their parking spaces to con to be conforming with the design requirements as detailed in the town code. And again, that I think goes back to the whole uh, issue involving the uh, engineering and the slopes and all that. Any anyone else have any other thoughts about that? Please say so. Okay. How, how does how does Andrew say they're going to make those spaces conforming? You think you can just shift them further south? Yeah. Okay. I think, so. I think there's space to shift the spaces and the four foot walkway um, south. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I, I, I got to confess, I'm a little uh, on, uh, I'm in agreement with Randy, but if the app, as far as, you know, the size of its structure is concerned, uh, you know, it would ameliorate a lot of the issues that they have here. But uh, again, it's the applicant's application. So if they're not interested in that, then we're going to have to, uh, you know, do other things, conform other ways, or find other ways to conform. Does the planning board support a variance for parking in the right of way along South Euclid Avenue? How does the uh, how do we feel about that? Yeah, yeah, yes. All yep. around. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, ordinarily, I'm not a big fan of those either, but in this case, I think it's necessary. Should the applicant revise their landscaping plan to include the proper quantity of plantings? I don't think I'm going to have any objection on that. Should the applicant revise their landscaping plan to include taller trees that are eight to 10 feet high at planting? Anyone? No? Okay, that's all yes. Well, this yeah, that goes that, that's the where they are. Right. It goes Kathy? to the. Can I be able to you know they should work i mean i think we can you know that should be worked out on some level with the zoning board i think <clears throat> in terms of the nrsp mm -hmm. and um you know any other any kinds of plantings that might help filter because you know everything is coming in that direction uh, yeah. you know the the, the you don't side remember. of the property that's um nearest nearest the wetlands will could require more specific plantings i think andrew's point that Brian Frank will have specific suggestions. Yeah. Is it good? But rem remember and those that tall they, trees may not be among them, you know, especially in terms of the sight line issue. So yeah, I, would, I, I agree. Know. I would leave that to, to the CBA. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, why don't we leave that? Yeah. You know, ask for their recommendation, yeah. especially yeah. given the sight line issue. But, but look, like the the wetland is at a higher elevation mm -hmm. than this site, so. There's not going to be runoff from this site into the wetland. It's going yeah. to be the other way. Right. So I'm not sure that they're going to be that concerned about uh, planting. It's a, isn't it across the street as well? It is. But my sense is that um, because they have to grant the NRSP anyway, th they might recommend plantings. In any case, I don't know that we have to answer that question tonight. No, I, think I think we've made the point that we want sight line. We want the safety of the sight line along the 
eastern border to be the prime the driving directive for what sort of plantings go in there and yeah. we'll yeah, go maybe, it may be it may be the sight lines and aesthetics actually that are yes and not so much the wetland that is the are the factors yeah. right right mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, this uh, actually, this next one, Kathy. Should the applicant revise their site plan to demonstrate the location of the dumpster enclosure uh, that will be screened by to six feet as required by the town code? Uh, uh, um, well, where did we leave with that, um, Kathy? That was I know you. Well, I made a recommendation that they put it in the southwest corner. I don't know if that'll work. You know, they can. I think they should just move it. Even if it's not going to be on the eastern portion, they should move it on the northern portion i just don't want it on the side that's facing the residential All right that's that's know. the concern yeah that was the concern because you know even though it, there's a street in between yeah. the residential district abuts this you know so yeah. I, i'm not sure that's going to work but i mean well let I, them see what they can do they they can do because okay. it's important we'll to get that dumpster away we can always screen it you know but it seemed to me like that yeah but then you have the trucks coming and going and it's you know if, if it can be done that it's not directly across from the right. residence it would be better yeah and we'll finally finally then should the applicant revise their lighting plan to be compliant with the town code i don't think anybody yeah they already said that. they would do yeah, that that's good. all right so listen as far as the engineer is concerned Mar I, I, maybe Marco, can you look into that? Uh, how do you, how should we uh, uh, go about that? Let uh, me, let, Edge? Mar Marco, let, let me talk to Joanne about it. We've had a conversation yeah. about this in the past, um, about what's the best way to do this. Okay, yeah, because they're, 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 they're not having a town engineer, we have to jump through a couple of hoops. All right. Um, can, I, can I just ask? I, I just have a couple, just a couple questions. The this right from the first quite uh, first comment. The the pink concrete. Is there is there a way that we can figure out what that is? So I, we're not having to to reason. Is there, is that like used called out in another site plan? Because we don't have a problem with it, but I don't want to have to be tracking it down. And and you know like if you can steer us, that'll help me. Um, you can do that. All right. Great. Good um the the basement area is is a utility and uh, mechanical area and it will will we're planning to label it unfinished mechanical and utility area um it's not envisaged to, to how high up is it or how how deep how tall is it uh i don't know off the top of my head well, is, I, it, is it more of a crawl space than a basement no it's more of a base it's a basement i mean it's a basement but oh. but it's gonna be i Definitively unfinished, I think is the critical thing that I well, we're happy to put on the survey, and and uh, I just want to raise that. Um, so you said storage, stuff. storage too, right, Andrew? You want to store? It's not envisaged to be. I mean, may yeah. someone store something there? But the yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Just okay. to, yeah, um, and then just just with respect to the 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 complications of of the size of the building, I. If it's just that two foot easement, I, I think we can just shift the whole building south two feet. I, I really think that that two foot easement was put there and we just, we didn't think about it truncating the parking spaces, which, you know, which it does on, at, at, on a technical basis, right? That, um, but everything can just shift shut south and, and, and I think we can get ourselves out of all of, all of the complications that, that are created by the parking there. And I, I just want to make I just want to make that point that you know the the size of the building I think isn't the issue. It's just it's too far north for that for that two foot easement, and we'll shift it south and hopefully unwind it. But we can talk about that next time because yeah, I, 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 Sam, I got one more one more thing. Sam, go right ahead, Tom. On the consulting engineer, do we want? Are we wanting a consulting engineer? to put together a grading and drainage plan or are we wanting the applicant to put together a grading and drainage plan that the consulting engineer will review? I think the latter. Okay. That would that'd be, that'd be, that'd be the way I would want it. And I think we might be, I think we might be a little bit premature on this as, as well because I think we need to see that plan. There's not a plan yet. Um, I, I think it's probably a good idea, but why don't we get that plan, have the planners look at it and then see. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right, Ian. You're right. I don't I don't agree with that because well remember what all the trouble we got into with the handicap ramp and the 
I, I think this is complicated enough that under no matter what the plan looks like, we don't have the expertise in house to to review it. But yeah, but no, you no. agree? Do you agree that a plan should be submitted and then yeah. the profession? That's I think that's all we really need to know right now. Yeah, I think I think that that makes sense from a really almost from a financial point of view from us is to is let the applicant prepare something, let the planning department look at it, let's see if there's any issues that they pick out because that could narrow the you know the the, the field of uh, of things that an engineer has to look at and then let it get to the engineer. I think, I think, I think it, it, we don't need to, we certainly shouldn't have an engineer designing the thing in the first no, place. No, no, that's, no. that's yeah, you know, I, mean, I don't think that's, yeah. that's, that's, that, that's, that I wouldn't want at all. But I, I think that it's, for, it makes sense for us to let the planning department have at it before the engineer does. I think it's, I think it's all that Ian's really suggesting, uh, unless I'm getting Ian yeah. wrong. So. No, that's correct. And I, I think it'll probably be a good idea in the end, but that's the yeah, other. I mean, you know, this is just again, well, you know, I mean, there is a cost involved, so we should, be, you know, we, we, we couldn't, we should be a little cognizant of that. But the point, right, Andrew, do you have anything else that you needed to uh, clarify before we move on? Nope. All no, right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we are now going to go into the public hearing. This is for uh, LTV. We're going to go into the public hearing portion. We have, just so that everyone knows, we have four public hearings scheduled. I'm looking. Curiously here for my list. Uh, first is Akamonic Grove Cemetery. Then is 294 Abraham's Path. Then is the ARF Phase 2 Site Plan. Then the Shared Generator Program. And then after that, we will return to our work session with the Nick Cohen Artist Studio. As I mentioned earlier, I am recused on Akamonic Grove, so I'm going to I'm going to keep the volume on so that I can hear you when you shout to me, but I will otherwise uh, take my uh, uh, camera, turn my camera off and do emails or something else. Okay. Okay. So, so Kathy, it's all yours. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we're on to the public hearing for Akabonic Grove Cemetery Expansion 2 site plan. Ed, would you please read the uh, public hearing notice in its entirety? Yep. Uh, sure. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held before the East Hampton Town Planning Board on Wednesday, December 9th, 2000, uh, 2020 at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter as this matter may be heard to consider said application. The public hearing will be held electronically by a video and teleconferencing, will be televised on LTV channel 22 and available for live stream on the LTV website, ltv.org. The public will not be permitted to appear in person, but may comment by telephone by calling 351-888-6331. A transcript of the hearing will also be posted to the town's website after the hearing, and the hearing shall remain open until January 8th, 2021, for the purpose of receiving written comments. Written comments may be submitted by email directed to planningboard at ehamptonny.gov and by mail to 300 Panago Place, Suite 103, East Hampton, New York, 11937, and received on or before the close of business on January 8th, 2021. The public hearing will be held to consider the application of Akabonic Grove Cemetery Expansion 2 site plan to make a secondary expansion to an existing cemetery by adding 369 plots, consisting of 319 standard and 60 cremains plots, the 10 plots to be abandoned, resulting in a total of 1,547 plots. The property is located at Old Stone Highway Springs and is situated in an A5 resident zoning district as shown on the official zoning map of the town of East Hampton. The premises are identified on the Suffolk County tax map as parcel 300-103-2-4.1 the Akabonic Grove Cemetery Expansion 2 site plan file is available for inspection at the planning board offices at 300 Panago Place, Suite 103 in East Hampton. Dated November 18th, 2020, Samuel Kramer, Chair. Okay, thank you, Ed. Um, Mike, do we have any callers on the line? Yes, we do. We've had a caller on hold for some time. I can unmute the caller right now if you'd like. Hold on one second. I have to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Thomas has to certify this. Excuse me. I forgot that. 
No problem. Um, yes, yeah, so I've reviewed an, the affidavit service and posting, and it appears that the uh, notice has been adequate. Okay, that's good, because we had a problem with that last time, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, okay, now, if there's anybody in the public that wishes to speak, I just want to also mention again that people can dial in at 351-888-6331 if they wish to comment on this public hearing or any thereafter. Mike, can you find out who this person is and if this is the hearing they want to comment on? Yes, I will unmute the first caller waiting right now. Hello. Hi. Um, hello. Hello. This is Kathy I'm Cunningham. To the firehouse. Excuse me. I think he said he's for the I'm firehouse, the share generator. Oh, okay. For your okay. Thank you. Well, you'll just continue to hold. Uh, the first of our four public hearings is on the Akabonic Grove Cemetery um, site plan. All right. Well, if there's no other caller there on the are, line. There is one other caller. Okay. I will unmute Could the we... next caller and hold right now. Thank you. Hi, Nick Krause calling. How are you? Hi, Nick. Are you? Um, well, thanks. Thanks for calling. Are you uh, uh, wanting to comment on the Akabonic Grove site plan? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, I live next door at uh, 312 Old Stone Highway, and okay. uh, I received the notice. And uh, I just wanted to say that um, I was not made aware of the first expansion, um, so I was a little surprised uh, the second time around. But um, I enjoy having the cemetery as a neighbor. Uh, I think they did a beautiful job with uh, the cemetery there. Um, and so I have no issue of that as a neighbor, but I do have a couple of, uh, and I have a couple of friends that are laid to rest there. So um, I understand the need for such a place. <clears throat> um, but uh, I guess my questions are are this: um, I'm just concerned about whether or not any kind of uh, environmental review has been done for this. I understand that the first time around uh, there was an exemption made or a special permit for being able to overclear or clear more than you ordinarily would be for a residential area. Um, wasn't sure what the environmental impact of all of the uh, deceased bit buried there are. For me that lives sort of uh, at a lower area than that, um, there's basically a lot of wetlands around my house and just north or just, I'm um, sorry, just south where the, the proposed uh, additional plots are. Uh, I'm just concerned about the water table there being so high. I'm also concerned about the uh, traffic. Oftentimes when there is a, a funeral service, uh, because there's no GPS signal or cell service there, I'm constantly having uh, cars pulling in my driveway, turning around there, asking for directions because there's a very, there is a sign for the uh, cemetery, but it's very easy to miss. And uh, people parking in front of the house, and it is already a dangerous curve in the road already. And so if they're only, maybe 100 people buried there already, and now we're proposing adding 369 more uh, to what's going to be another 1,000 plus on top of that that haven't been buried yet. Uh, you know, we're going to be looking at having uh, funerals there. I'm just concerned about parking issues. Um, you know, if this is a residential neighborhood, and I understand cemeteries are a different thing, but uh, if you were having an event with people at your house, you'd have to get a mass gathering permit. And now, Basically, we're looking at, you know, and again, I don't know if there's any study done on this already about how many people will be, you know, coming to join us there, but, um, and hopefully, you know, none too soon for their own sake. But um, I'm just concerned about the traffic flow, uh, lack of signage, uh, parking issues, uh, two kids under five, and just people pulling in my driveway constantly turning around anytime there is a service there uh, are my concerns. And that, of course, the environmental concerns. So I just wanted to have that. Uh, Put on record to be thought about. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, would you mind spelling your name for the record, Nick? I meant to ask you to do that earlier. Oh, sure. Sorry. Uh, my name's Nicholas, and I C H O L A S. My last name's Kraus. K R A U S. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much for your yes, comments. Um, thank you. We yes. appreciate I was just that. worried about that. As far as expansion goes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, is there any other member of the public that wishes to be heard? Yes, there is a new caller. I will unmute the new caller right now. Thank you. 
Hello. Hello. Are you calling to be heard on the Akabonic Grove Cemetery uh, site plan? Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, my you name is Patrice Dalton. It, could you spell it for the record, please? Uh, Patrice is P-A-T-R-I-C-E and Dalton D-A-L-T-O-N. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Dalton. Thank you for calling. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, my concern is the um, water runoff that we've been experiencing the last couple of years and most recently now. Um, we have standing water. Um, when you look at the cemetery down and down to Old Stone Highway, there's a, a little segment of land there. It's completely underwater, and, it's com and we're so close to the harbor. Um, my concern is that the additional clearing be I know where it's going to be, um, but uh, my concern is that there be a scenic easement so that there is no additional um, clearing of the trees because we are distinctly downhill from the cemetery and the water is just running down. I've had problems with my well. I've had problems with standing water um, on my property. And I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned about that. And, um, the, the cemetery itself is lovely. I have no complaints about that or how it's, how it's managed. It's just the scalability of that amount of land and that amount of clearing that is contemplated. So if we put a scenic easement in there and this was it, I'd be fine. But they, it seems like there have been multiple asks on this property. And like Nick as well, I was not informed about the last one. I was not informed about this one, except I did notice the sign, and I live on the opposite side of the driveway from Nick. So, um, you know, I would just like to see this be, the, understand what the final scope of this is. And that's my comment. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I want to thank both of our callers. Uh, is there someone else on the line, Mike? Is there anyone else from the public that wishes to be heard? No, there is no other callers, just the previous one is waiting. Excuse me? There are no new callers, just that one other caller on hold for the um, general Oh, for hearing. the next hearing, yes. Okay. All right. Well, I thank the um, uh, Mr. Krause and Ms. Dalton for calling in, and um, we will leave the... Uh, Kathy, so, sorry to interrupt. Um, if Dan Weaver is here and wishes to respond uh, or say anything, he's welcome to, um, but... He can also respond in writing up until the record closes. Oh, that's new to me. We, uh, we've not usually done that. Usually public hearing, you just take the comment and close it. And Okay. Well, no, not, not for me. Excuse me? Sorry, I was. Who's I, that? I think it was Sam. Um, no. it, the, the, we let the applicant's um, agent speak quite often. You know, yeah. We have, quick hearings but um okay i always thought we didn't we didn't let the applicant speak unless there was new information that was my uh, maybe i'm running under old rules but uh okay if i mean thomas if that's your guidance we can do that um dan are you there i am i'm here would you like to make a comment sure the the one comment i would like to make um to miss dalton's um comment was that we are uh, uh, showing a scenic easement on the property. So this would limit any additional clearing beyond this current application. So basically anything that's not cleared now or is not being cleared for the expansion would have a scenic easement over it uh, or conservation easement over it for, you know, for here on out. Okay, is there anything else? That's it for me. Thank you, Dan. Okay, if there's no other member of the public that wishes to be heard, we'll close the public comment portion of this and remain open for written comment. Is it until January 8th, is that correct? Yes. Yes, yes I'm eight. sorry, I can't hear. Yes, yes okay, all right, so then, um, Anybody has any more uh, any other comments they wish to make? Please submit them in writing before January eighth for the board's consideration. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, Sam. You're up. Thank you very much. I'm, I started. I was looking for something else when I was talking there. Um, 
Okay, the next one we have is... Why don't you put your video on? Oh, I thought I was on. <laughs> come on, come on, come back. Am I there? Yep. Hey, uh, Sam, can I interrupt you quickly? It's Ed. Ahead. Could Should we move to the firehouse since we actually have a caller who's interested in commenting on that? Um, you mean change the order? Mm -hmm. It's probably, well, you know, uh, I, I, let me ask you this. Uh, let, me, let me ask LTV. Do we have, um, how many callers do we have online, uh, Michael? Just, there is just that one caller who stated he's waiting for the generator hearing. I, I tell you what, you know, Ed, that's a really good idea. Uh, let, why not? Let, let, let's let that caller uh, get on with this evening because we were supposed to be going with him an hour ago, at least according to schedule. Uh, so, uh, t so they're, they're yeah, they were, they were all scheduled for 7 o'clock, so it really doesn't matter what, what we do to them. Sharon? You there, Sharon? I'm here. Okay. okay. So this is on my phone, so I think it's big enough, but here goes. <laughs> okay. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held before the East Hampton Town Planning Board on Wednesday, December 9, 2020, at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter as this matter may be heard to consider said application. The public hearing will be held electronically by video and teleconferencing and will be televised on local TV, channel 22 and available for live stream on the LTV website, um, ltveh.org. The public shall not be permitted to appear in person but may comment by telephone by calling 351-888-6331. A transcript of the hearing will, will also be posted to the town's website after the hearing and the hearing shall remain open until January 8th, 2021 or within one week of posting of the transcript on the town's website, whichever is later for the purpose of receiving written comments. Written comments may be submitted by email directed to planning board at East Hampton newyork.gov and by mail to 300 Pantago Place, Suite 103, East Hampton, New York, 11937, and received on or before close of business on January 8th, 2021. The public hearing will be held to consider the application of shared generator program site plan approval pursuant to Article 6 of Chapter 255 of the East Hampton Town Code to locate a 192 square foot 16 by 12 generator and associated cabling and equipment within an existing equipment area for the personal wireless service facility located at the Amagansett Fire Department property. The lease area contains uh, 4,200 square feet within the property that consists of 4.8 acres and is located on the north side of Main Street, Amagansett, and is situated in an a residence zoning district as shown on the official zoning map of the town of East Hampton and is identified on the Suffolk County tax map as parcel 300-150-3-16.5, 439 Main Street. Subject application is classified as a type two action pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CECRA, part 617 of the New York Code of Rules and Regulations and chapter 128 uh, environmental quality review of the town code, a set of plans prepared by American Tower AT Engineering Service dated revised August 26, 2019, including title sheet G001, general notes G002, compound details and general notes V101, existing conditions and legal descriptions V102, site plan C101, concrete pad details, C501, electronical, electrical, sorry, one line and wiring details, E601 and supplemental R601 is available for inspection at the planning board office, suite 103, 300 Pantico Place, East Hampton, New York. Dated November 18th, 2020, Samuel Kramer, chairman. Thank you very much, Sharon. Uh, mm -hmm. Thomas? Uh, how are we for jurisdiction on this? <laughs> yes, I've reviewed the affidavit of service and posting, and it appears the notice has been adequate. Very good. Um, do we hear from the planning department on this? Uh, if, if you want me to just to give an overview of the plans and the location of the site. Yeah, let's do it real quick. Okay. 
Um, so you should be able to see on the screen the aerial of the location of the Amagansett Fire Department, which is the subject parcel. The area where the diesel generator is proposed to be located is um, to the rear in, ex in an existing equipment area. Um, and I have the full set of plans submitted by the applicants, which includes uh, an overall site layout, as well as a specific um, uh, close up of the equipment area. And uh, this area here where my cursor is, where it says proposed uh, generator pad and uh, diesel generator. Uh, is the structure that they are applying for um, appro for approval. Okay. In that case, um, do we have somebody, uh, Michael, uh, on the phone who wants to be heard uh, on the uh, public hearing? Yes, I'll unmute the caller right now. Thanks very much. Hello. Caller, um, if you can Rick kindly. Lynch. Yes. Go ahead. Your name, spell I'm it, please. Rick an address. Lift. Go ahead. R I C K L I S S. Okay? Okay, and you're located at where? 441 Montauk Highway east of and adjacent to the firehouse. Very well. I've lived please, here for please. 67 years. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. The floor is yours. Sir, Say it again. Go right, ahead. go right ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you. I've lived here for 67 years as background. And there is an existing generator, backup generator for the firehouse, which was installed approximately 30 years ago in the uppermost northeast corner of that utility area. It is the, the structure that houses it is approximately six inches from my property line. Apparently, the fire department was exempt from setback rules, etc. But it is a diesel engine, and it sounds like a very large tractor trailer when it's in operation. And for example, last week, there was an outage from 10 p.m. till 2 o'clock the following day, and I could not sleep that whole evening because the generator was running. So it makes a very profound impact audio on my property and the peaceful enjoyment of. So I am very concerned about this new generator as is, is this a replacement generator or an additional generator to service their tenant, the uh, radio tower? That's a question. We're not here to answer questions, sir. Okay. Sorry, can't do that. Well, the my my uh, concern is that if we have two generators there, that I'm going to be bombarded with twice as much noise during an outage, as well as the 30 minutes a week that has to run for maintenance. Right now, we have an agreement with the fire department that they run it Friday from one to. 1.30 on Fridays, which is very manageable. So there is no soundproofing in the existing housing. And if, there, if you're going to build a new house in the same area for another diesel generator, I am requesting that consideration be made for soundproofing of that structure as a neighborly gesture. The, um, just a little history, my parents in 1960 sold the Amagansett's first additional uh, parking lot at cost to the fire department as a neighborly gesture to the firehouse and the community. And I'm just asking for the same treatment. So that's my main concern, the noise factor. I understand that it, Tests have been made for the new generator, that it does meet the official requirements for sound levels, but that still uh, might impact my, you know, me as the adjacent neighbor, which is why I'm requesting soundproofing be added. 
So that's my concern. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate that, and your comments will be made part of the record. Uh, if, if there are okay. no other calls, Michael, are there any other calls waiting to be heard? No, there are not. Okay. In that case, this the uh, public hearing, the the spoken portion of the public hearing. Well, so you yeah. might want to hear the applicants. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, the applicant is on the line. Do we have the applicant here? Yes, Chairman. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Chris Fisher. Uh, Mr. Fisher, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank yes, absolutely. Happy to be here this evening. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. I just wanted to acknowledge Mr. Alyssa's comments and um, absolutely understand the request to be neighborly and share with him that um, on these drawings, which are still on the screen, we have actually incorporated sound attenuation, which is an option for these types of um, of facilities it's called a level two sound enclosure and that's actually noted right on the plan um and then i was actually the new information that he just shared was very helpful to us I, uh the scheduling of um testing of these particular uh units when they do it's typically monday through friday business hours um, we're happy to coordinate a time to make sure because we can schedule that pretty easily it's electronic as to when the um unit would uh, cycle and if it was the same as Friday, 1 to one thirty, or some other time that was more convenient, that's certainly something we can accommodate. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Okay, now, with that, <laughs> we will keep the public record open. Uh, it, it, we're closing it now for spoken comment. But we are keeping the public record open uh, until, Sh Sharon, what's the date that it's open until I don't have the meeting notice in front of me? Sharon? Um, I will have to, yeah, hang on. <laughs> oh, it's on your phone. I apologize. It's Make January sure. 8th. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, someone. Ed, I think that was you. Yeah. Okay, so to the public, uh, written comments. Uh, you can still please uh, submit them to the planning board uh, through January 8th, at which point the uh, record will be closed. Thank you. And now with that, we will now move on to 294 Abraham's Path uh, LLC minor subdivision. Lou, this one is yours. Lou? Is Lou there? Yeah, you're on mute, Lou. Okay, sorry about that. Here we go. Okay, go ahead. Public hearing notice. Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held before the East Hampton Town Planning Board on Wednesday, December 9th, 2020 at 7 p.m. or as soon thereafter as this matter may be heard to consider said application. The public hearing will be held electronically by video and teleconferencing and will be televised on local TV, LTV channel 22, and available for live stream on the LTV website, ltv.org. The public shall not be permitted to appear in person, but may comment by telephone by calling 351-888-6331. A transcript of the hearing will also be posted to the town's website after the hearing, and the hearing shall remain open until January 8th, 2021 or within one week of posting of the transcript on the town's website, whichever is later. For the purpose of receiving written comments, for the purpose of receiving written comments, written comments may be submitted by email directed to planning board at ehamptonny.gov and by mail to 300 Pantago Place, Suite 103, East Hampton, New York, 11937, and received on or before close of business on January 8th, 2021. The public <clears throat> hearing will be held to consider the application of 294 Abraham's Path LLC minor subdivision approval pursuant to Chapter 220 subdivision of land of the Hampton Town Code to divide a parcel into two individual lots. The original parcel will be divided into proposed lot one, consisting
consisting of 40,836 square feet minus a proposed access easement and, and proposed lot two containing 44,854 square feet. The property contains 89,708 square feet and is located on the west side of Abraham's Path, East Hampton, and is situated in an A residence as shown on the official zoning map of the town of East Hampton and is identified on the Suffolk County tax map as parcel number 300-149-2-31. Subject application is classified as a type two action pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CEQRA, part 1617 of the New York Code of Rules and Regulations and chapter 128 Environmental Quality Review of the Town Code. A survey prepared by Saskis Surveying Company PC dated revised August 31, 2020, is available for inspection at the Planning Board Office, Suite 103, 300 Pantago Place, East Hampton, New York, dated November 18, 2020, Samuel Kramer, Chairman. Thank you very much, Lou. Thomas, how are we for jurisdiction on this? Uh, I've reviewed the affidavit of service and posting and it appears the notice has been adequate. Very well. And uh, Eric, are you uh, going to be able to give us uh, a moment or two on this? Or is it Marco's application? Oh, sorry, I'm, I was muted. Uh, no, I'll, I'll handle it. Um, so you should be able to see on the screen the aerial photograph. Um, the property is highlighted at the center. Uh, it is on Abraham's path, as the title of the application suggests. Um, Acabonic Road can be seen to the left here. Uh, to the west with the town landfill um, also clearly visible and the golf course uh, across the street. This is the proposed map. Um, basically, the applicants are proposing to divide this um, uh, real, well, roughly two acre property and one acre zoning into two lots um, at the middle midpoint. Uh, there is an existing residence here, which is to be removed. The two um, rectangles that you see here are um, hypothetical residences demonstrating that they can fit the sanitary on site um, due to the proximity of neighboring um, private water wells. A scenic easement of 50 feet in width is proposed at Abraham's Path. Um, and so, uh, and a um, common driveway is proposed along the southern portion of the property. Could you switch back to the uh, overhead photograph? Sure. All right, so all the other part, I mean, you pointed out the uh, um, uh, the industrial and the golf course and the recycling center, but all the rest of those parcels, those are all residential parcels. Correct. All around it. Okay. Correct. All right, very good. Um, okay, uh, does the, do we have, Michael, uh, do we have any members of the public who wish to be heard on this application? We do not have any callers at this time. Okay, it is now 8.18 p.m., we will close the uh, spoken portion of the public hearing and keep the record open. I presume it's the same date as the other two, January 8th, 2021. Uh, if you have any written comments, you can submit them to the planning board. Excuse me. Yes. Oh, and uh, before we close the meeting completely, does counsel for the applicant have anything he wishes to say? Uh, yes, just one small point of correction. Thank Lot you. one is actually 44,854 minus the proposed easement. Wow. The 40,836 is excluding the easement area. Well, thank you for clarifying the record on that point. That, that's, <laughs> that's all I have. Very well. Okay. So we will, uh, as I said, we'll close the spoken portion of the, um, of the public hearing and uh, await uh, written comment, if any between now and January 8th. Last, our phase two site plan. Randy, this is yours. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held before the East Hampton Town Planning Board on Wednesday, December 9th, 2020 at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter as this matter may be heard to consider said application. The public hearing will be held electronically. 
by video and teleconferencing and will be televised on local TV, LTV channel 22 and available for live stream on the LTV website, ltveh.org. The public shall not be permitted to appear in person, but may comment by telephone by calling 351-888-6331. A transcript of the hearing will also be posted to the town's website after the hearing and the hearing shall remain open until January 8th, 2021, or within one week of posting of the transcript on the town's website, whichever is later, for the purpose of receiving written comments. Written comments may be submitted by email directed to planningboard at ehamptonny.gov and by mail to 300 Panago Place, Suite 103, East Hampton, New York, 11937 and received on or before close of business on January 8th, 2021. The public hearing will be held to consider the application of the Animal Rescue Fund of the Hamptons Incorporated Phase Two Site Plan Approval pursuant to Article 6 of Chapter 255 of the East Hampton Town Code to replace and renovate the existing kennel building from 6,217 square feet to 7,049 square feet, construction of a one-story training building of 8,404 square feet, renovations in the office of 1,374 square feet of area and lobby space of 4,124 square feet of area. Also proposed is a 2,900 square foot area of outdoor exercise yard, a stair tower, and small adoption area of 471 square feet, which will be added to the lobby area, extension of 451 square feet as an additional conference space of the westerly side of the office building and replacing the existing sanitary system with a nitrogen reducing septic for all new construction for human and animal waste. 24 new parking spaces, including two ADA spaces are proposed with a total of 54 parking spaces, including two existing spaces. The property contains 981,846 square feet or 22.54 acres and is situated in an A5 residence water recharge overlay district zoning district as shown on the official zoning map of the town of East Hampton and is identified on the Suffolk County tax map as parcel 300-192-34. One square feet as an additional conference space of the... Uh... Sorry about that tech. Go ahead, Randy. Okay. okay. Um, on the Suffolk County tax map as parcel 300 34 124 Daniels Hole Road. Subject application is classified as an unlisted action pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CECRA, Part 617 of the New York Code of Rules and Regulations, and Chapter 128, Environmental Quality Review of the Town Code. A negative declaration pursuant to CICRA was made on October 28, 2020 for the reasons set forth in the Environmental Assessment Form Part 2. A survey prepared by George Walbridge Surveyors PC dated revised September 23, 2020, a set of plans prepared by D.B. Bennett, P.E.P.C., dated revised September 22, um, 2020, including civil site plan C1, CALS and notes C2, partial site plan C3, construction details C4, exterior lighting C5, training facility sanitary details C6, kennel building sanitary details C7, 
water supply improvements C8, and landscape plan C9 are available for inspection at the Planning Board Office, Suite 103, 300 Panago Place, East Hampton, New York. Dated November 18th, 2020, Samuel Kramer, Chairman. Very good, thank you, Randy. Thomas, how are we? For um, I reviewed the affidavit of service and posting, and it appears the notice has been adequate. Very good, thank you very much. And uh, is this? Uh, yeah, I'll, I got it. Yeah. Okay, Eric, um, thank you again. So you should have an aerial photograph in front of you of the property. It's situated off Daniels Hall Road in Wainscott. Um, you can see clearly the airport um, right across the street. Um, switching to the survey, which is a little difficult to see, but the applicants did provide um, a blow up of the area of the improvements. Uh, basically, they're proposing to um, modify the, the parking layout a little bit by adding a parking lot um, to the east. As, well, I suppose I'll start from the east here going west. Uh, they're proposing a new building here um, for the on-site um, operations. Uh, they're proposing an, an outdoor exercise yard. Uh, they're proposing new wall, a series of new walkways and, and um, some other appurtenances uh, throughout the site. Uh, they're proposing to renovate uh, an existing building and then proposing to add a new uh, kennel building. Um, this is also a building that is to be renovated. Um, so Randy outlined um, all those details of those proposed improvements in the notice. Uh, so I have um, this survey, which he also referenced. Uh, as well as the set of more in-depth plans um, that he, he also referenced, uh, if anyone needs them. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, and with that, Michael, do we have any callers on the phone? No, we do this? not. Okay. Do we have the applicant who may wish to be heard? Yes, good evening, board members. It's Karen Hogue from the law firm of Timmy Latham. Um, mm -hmm. How are you? Um, being that there are no public comments, um, I would just like to address an open comment that was raised by the board at the last work session regarding the separation to groundwater for the nitrogen reducing septic. Uh, Drew Bennett is here and if okay with the board, I just would like him to briefly speak to that. Let me ask Council Thomas. Yeah, if he's here, uh, go ahead. All right, go ahead. Drew, you're on. Good evening, board members. It's Drew Bennett speaking. Um, uh, I'm sorry I wasn't able to attend the last uh, planning board meeting, but I understand that there was a question raised about the separation from the bottom of the leaching pools to the projected highest groundwater table. And um, I think the short answer is that we will be providing more than four feet of separation in in all of the new new systems. So I hope that answers the question. Very well, thank you very much. Okay, with that, we will close the spoken portion of the public hearing and leave the uh, public hearing open for written comment through January 8th, 2020. Thank you all for participating in these public hearings. Uh, the board will review all written and uh, recall all spoken comments. And uh, these matters will come back before us for a wrap-up memo by the planning department and our uh, further activity on the files. Uh, okay. With that, the final matter of the year goes to uh, Eric. It's it'll be Nick Cohen Artist Studio. Yep. And take cool. it away. Sure. I'm just uh, calling up the plans here. Um, let me. Share screen. So um, again, this is an application for an artist studio. Um, the applicants propose to build the artist studio on an adjacent vacant lot uh, that they also own. Those two parcels can be seen at the center of the screen. There are a number of issues um, addressing the comments of, of the planning board from the time of its last review, its initial review. Um, most of those relate to um, dimensional issues such as the location um, of the, the artist studio access to it. Um, however, an issue did arise um, since the last review where um, 10 Lafayette Place, which is this um, corner lot uh, that is the vacant lot, uh, has been um, mostly, if not entirely, cleared of vegetation. 
Now, um, that is not allowed to occur without first obtaining planning board approval uh, and then obviously obtaining a building permit. It's my understanding, um, based on conversations with them, that ordinance enforcement uh, was alerted to this um, and went down to the site, uh, however, with the intention of issuing a stop work order. However, the work had completed by the time they got down there, so there's, there was no work to stop. Um, I visited the site on November 12th and took pictures of the clearing, um, November 20th, excuse me. Uh, and then also there are some pictures here from ordinance enforcement. Um, so I just wanna show you those just to verify uh, the extent of the clearing. And just give it a second to open. If it ever opens, there we go. Okay, so this is a photograph taken from Lafayette Place um, of 10 Lafayette Place, which is the vacant lot which the artist studio was proposed or is proposed to be on. Um, this is a view looking again into the interior of the property. Um, this is looking, I believe, mostly to the north. Um, this is a photo looking more to the east um, on the property. You can see a stack of logs on the right hand side here, which was the trees that were on the property. Uh, that is now dead center in the photograph. Um, the applicant's property, you can see um, just to the right of that stack of logs. Um, these are photos that were taken by ordinance enforcement um, when the, the clearing was occurring. Um, you can see uh, people working there. And then this is also the, the last one that they took. So um, again, uh, that's a big issue here because that's something where the app, you know, and, uh, the owner of a residential lot is supposed to obtain um, planning board approval, site plan approval. Um, again, this is an artist studio application. It does not have the, the standards that are associated with a site plan application. Um, however, that's a site plan application is required on the vacant lot now or revegetation or the applicants um, can obtain a building permit for principal residence. Um, normally that would happen first and then the clearing associated with the plan to build the residence would, would occur. Um, so it's an interesting and um, unfortunate and confusing situation. And uh, I believe the board should discuss with council um, uh, how and if um, they can proceed with this at this time, um, because now we are sort of in a weird situation where there's sort of two different types of applications that are required. There's a site plan application required for the clearing. And of course, obviously the artist studio application for a proposed artist studio. Um, so I think that I, well, I had a discussion with the, the chair and vice chair uh, and I believe they want to discuss that issue first before potentially getting into the um, some of the more dimensional uh, elements of the proposed plan. So um, at that, I'll leave it to you, Mr. Chairman, and um, perhaps Thomas to to address that issue. Yeah, well, thank you, Eric. I, actually, what I wanted to do is I wanted to get Thomas's guidance as to the impact of the because look, we're not here to enforce to do code enforcement. That's not our job, but. Uh, I, I'd like Thomas's advice for the board with uh, with respect to the impact of this application. And also, I would like to hear from the board, uh, uh, from, uh, from Randy uh, and the other members of the board, this is uh, Randy's application, uh, and of course, from the applicant himself, uh, you know, with respect to going forward. But Thomas, if you can give us some guidance on this as an initial uh, uh, matter. Yeah, sure. So typically, um, you know, violations are not really to be considered by the planning board along with a, a site plan or special permit application um, unless there's uh, a nexus between the violation and what the application is. Um, I think there's a good argument here that there is a nexus between the alleged violation and what the application would be. So I think the, you know, whether it's providing a separate site plan application or a revegetation plan, um, 
you know, I, I think it's within the board's uh, authority to um, seek or acquire one of those. Um, and I, I think it's probably best to hear from the applicant as to, um, how, you know, what mitigation they would want to pursue um, and how they want to deal with it. Should we hear from the applicant? I, I guess we should follow the ordinary courts and uh, uh, the applicant's uh, counsel uh, is is on. I see, I see Mark uh, there. That, that Mark Sam, uh, yeah. shouldn't we shouldn't we hear the rest of Eric's memo before? Well, um, how, how, I I suppose so. Yeah. Okay. Let's do let's do that. But when we go. Uh, the first thing we have to deal with, and I'll ask the applicant, uh, the first thing we have to deal with is, is uh, this issue. And uh, depending upon what the applicant says with respect to this issue, that'll uh, have a lot to do with where we go afterwards. So, um, uh, Eric, if you would. Yeah. Um, so um, um, the town code limits the size of an artist studio to 600 square feet, just like any other accessory structure. However, you can al allow a larger um, artist studio um, if the property constraints make it difficult or impractical to construct a studio um, that's not attached to a principal building. Um, if the applicant has justified the need for a larger studio based on, upon the applicant's art form and scope and size of work. Uh, and the size is compatible with the residential neighborhood. So provided you find all that, you can allow an art studio of greater than 600 square feet. What they're proposing or we're proposing is 1,041 square feet. Um, we did note that maximum build, allowable building coverage on the lot with the residents is 5,044 square feet. Um, again, 1,041 square feet matches the ground floor of the residents. So, it does seem that there's ample space on site if they were to do um, an attached artist studio or basically just another room uh, in the house. Um, however, if you do uh, feel that um, a larger artist studio is warranted, uh, it has to be capped to the lesser of the gross floor area of the ground floor of the residence. Again, 1,040, 41 square feet, an area equal to 5% of the lot area, which would be 1,261 square feet if it was on 10 lot they had placed the vacant parcel or 2,500 square feet. So again, that's the, the lesser of those, which obviously is the 1,040 square feet. Uh, the uh, original request met this um, exactly. However, uh, their most recently submitted letter uh, states that they're asking for 1,600 square feet. Um, they would need to, to obtain a variance um, from the standards of the town code uh, for that. Um, the applicants have submitted rough elevation drawings um, excuse me, I X'd out a, a folder here. Um, they have submitted rough elevation drawings, which you should be able to see now. Um, again, uh, this is an artist studio application that doesn't go in front of the ARB. Normally, materials and colors would be their purview, um, and you wouldn't be so involved in that. But you may want to um, see if you feel that you need more information from the applicants regarding the appearance of it to make sure that it's compatible with the neighborhood. Um, the original sketch located the uh, artist studio, um, as you can see if I put that on the right screen, uh, you can see in gray where they were proposing the artist studio in the southeastern corner um, of the vacant lot, 10 Lafayette Place, and then also their existing home at 52 Harbor View. Uh, the app, the board asked the applicants to locate it possibly closer to the residence and away from this property line because there is an existing residence within relatively close proximity here, which you can see would be this residence um, that I have my cursor over here. So uh, they submitted a revised sketch with a new location. Um, however, it, it's still considerably far away from the residence, about um, 150 feet. And although um, this parcel, the residence is, is further away, um, it would still be uh, in, well, it meets the uh, accessory structure setbacks, but um, would be adjacent to their property line. 
Um, so uh, there was also a question of how the artist studio, um, how access um, would be obtained, um, both you know just on foot because there was no pathway indicated, but then also if there are large sculptures um, or large amounts of materials that, that might need to be moved in and out of the studio, uh, whether or not vehicles or machinery is going to be required to, to perform that uh, and how that would happen, um, we don't really have any information on that at this time. There was a question about whether or not the lots would be required to be merged. I think this was basically under the um, assumption that, well, the fact that they are both substandard in terms of lot area um, for their zoning district. Uh, however, they are urban renewal parcels. Um, you had asked council to look into this. Um, I will ask him to address it either now or later if you want, Thomas. Yeah, I'll just do it now. Um, as far as the issue of the language of con continuous conforming residential lots, um, uh, Mark Catalano, the ap applicant's representative, submitted a letter and uh, I reviewed it with John Jelnicki and we both agreed that uh, the letter has addressed that issue, basically that the lots are, are UR map lots and um, the conforming uh, definition that usually applies to a uh, lot area would not apply here because they're conforming UR map lots. Um, so we don't believe that's an issue. Okay. Um, so the only other issue that I outlined in my memo uh, was you had asked about wastewater containment. Uh, they're not proposing a, um, any restrooms in the, uh, in the artist studio, but uh, there is a sink indicated um, there should there is required to be some form of um, control of you know the gray water that's going going to come from the sink. Um, again, this is an artist studio, uh, so you may want to. I know you have in the past, but um, just inquire about um, materials that are going to be used, and you know particularly liquid um, materials or chemicals. But uh, that is also information that was requested that uh, you have not received. So uh, with that. Um, the only other issue, again, uh, outlined was the clearing, um, so I will leave it to the board. Thank you very much, Eric. And Mark, Ms. Carolano, you there? I think so. Am I? Yeah, now you're back. You're there. Yeah. We don't, get um, to, we don't see you, but we hear you. Okay. I'm glad you don't see me. That's good. <laughs> uh, Nick's on the line. He's going to address that, but my... Um, I, I, I don't have any really thing on the clearing except the question. Um, I mean, aside from doing it in the wrong, in the wrong order, um, maybe Thomas can answer this. If the clearing is, I know you're not supposed to clear unimproved property without, you know, that's without the permit and it's limited, but, but you can improve, you can clear when, when there is a permit for a, for, it says, it refers to unimproved property. So would a accessory structure like what he's doing, if had, that had been done in the right order, I'm assuming that he can still, as long as he meets the clearing limitation, that that's, that that's okay if he has a, the accessory structure, not a principal structure, because it only talks about unimproved properties um, that are, are limited. What, what's, do, do you have an, a, a take on that? Yeah, I mean, I. I'm not sure. I think he would need a building permit, but I, I'd have to look into that. Um, I think the issue here is that it's, it would, I, I have to ask Eric, but I think it's over cleared. You know, if it was just, if, if it was um, cleared for an artist studio, I, I think it's, it's over cleared um, for that. Yeah. I'm sure that. I, I quoted the code sections here, but um, I didn't, uh, I didn't, well, I noted them. I didn't quote them in the memo. Um, so I'm just looking this up uh, just to, I, I mean, you know, this might be a conversation for another time, um, you know, getting into the, the definition here. Uh, yeah, so you need a building based on um, the code for requiring a building permit. It says clearing on unimproved. Well, in fact, I can actually put that up for you. Um, it says clearing on unimproved residential properties and residential districts. The clearing or grading of more than a 10-foot wide path. Um, 
you know, to obtain health department services approval, basically for a, a test hall. Um, and then this is on improved residential properties, which is not the case here. Um, so basically you need, a, uh, you need a building permit if you're gonna clear um, residential, unimproved residential properties uh, in a residential district. But you also, under the um, chapter requiring site plan review, um, which it is 630A, um, A2, so in a single family residence district, you're required for to get site plan approval for any clearing or grading of a lot or land insufficient to require a, sufficient to require a building permit, unless the clearing or grading is necessary and integral to a part of another activity, such as most single family residence construction for which a building permit has been issued uh, and which does not itself require site plan approval. So, uh, you know, I think that that's pretty clear that it says you need site plan approval uh, to clear a lot unless you have a building permit for uh, to build a single family residence, um, which in this case, I, I don't, you know, I don't believe that's the case here. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't interpret that as meaning that if you have a, which first of all, there is no building permit because they don't have the, the approval for the artist studio. But if you did have a building permit for just an artist studio, that's not a single family residence. Um, so I would think that you would need site plan approval uh, for the clearing, for, to do that clearing. You know, the, the, the out here, uh, you know, it seems clear that you need site plan approval if you're going to clear a, a vacant residential lot for whatever reason, unless you have a building permit to build a residence, because obviously you're going to clear the residential property to build a residence. Um, that's the way I read this. I don't think that if they had approval for an artist studio that that would well, I shouldn't even go that angle. It's it's all cart before the horse. Um, well, that's it, the problem. The problem is that you need site plan approval if you're going to do that clearing, which would you as a board. So if the argument is that they, they, they did that in anticipation of the artist studio, you know, here's a question. Would you as a board allow them to clear the nearly the entire lot to put that artist studio on, on that lot? I don't think you would. I don't think you would grant that site plan approval. I can't um, predict what you would approve, but I know I, all I can say is as a member of the planning department, I wouldn't recommend you to grant that approval. It's, it's excessive and unnecessary. So, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, as I see it, they need that building permit for residents or they need your site plan approval and neither exists right now, so. Well, Thomas, um, I mean, do we go forward? I, I mean, do we go forward with a discussion or well, yes. I actually, I should turn to Mark probably. Yeah, let's hear from that. Mark, go right ahead. I'm sorry, Mark. I didn't mean to. to no, I'll, I'll, and then, then I'll let Nick talk. But my only, I mean, aside from the cart before the horse thing, which is totally, totally correct. Um, my, my question was just about whether the, if the clearing meets, I mean, the ultimate product, which hopefully, you know, we'll get to, but if the clearing that's been done meets the, uh, limitations for residents or, or just for the lot, uh, you know, under the lot size. I just um, was looking for language that would allow the same clearing for not a single family residence. Like this chapter that Eric was referring to, that provision says, unless the clearing or grading is necessary and integral part of another activity, such as a single family, or such as most single, single family residence construction, it didn't limit it to that. So I, I guess I'm just looking for the ultimate, however we get there, <clears throat> if the clearing that's there is something that would meet the code for an accessory structure like this, that's, um, you know, for this project. So that's what, that's what I'm looking for. And I, I don't, I don't see it. I think there's a table for all residential clearing based on the lot size in another, another section. Right. That's what I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah. Yeah. And they would be allowed to clear um, a good portion of this property. I believe it's something about uh, around 16,000 square feet, uh, whereas the lot is about 25,000 square feet. But I, I mean, obviously I will defer, I was just making my point there, but I'll obviously defer to Thomas on this. Um, but I, I see it as that, that that's, a, you know, you're not, you don't need site plan approval if you're building a single family residence and you're, you're doing the clearing associated with it. Um, but, but that's that's just yeah. You know. Eric, when when somebody applies for a 
building permit for a single family home, though the building department would make sure they're in conformance with the clearing requirements. Yes, correct. Yes. And I would just like to add, and, and I don't want to get into a legal dispute, but Eric, if you can just put that back up again for a second. Sure. It's, you know, I, I disagree with Mark's uh, interpretation of that particular clause where it says such as, as he interprets it, meaning that it could be a single family residence or some other structure. I would read that to mean uh, uh, let me read it again. It says, such as most single family residence construction. So I read that to mean that if you're looking at single family residence construction, most of that, most of the, those types of construction, that is single family residence construction, would apply here. I don't think it means any kind of construction on the property. I think they're just referring it solely and exclusively to single family residences as Eric had interpreted it. Okay, let's, well, I'll look into it a little further. I think though, if we can hear from Mark and the applicant. Yeah, um, let's, let's do that. And then we'll, we can figure out from there where the direction we need to go on this particular application. So Mark, the floor is yours and your uh, Nick, and yeah, I'm here. Thanks, guys, for having this conversation. Um, I'd like to say that I completely agree with you guys um, with the clearing of the lot. I had no intention to put the cart before the horse. Uh, I had called the town building department. I had a conversation with the, one of the inspectors, and I said that I would like to obtain a permit to clear the property. Um, he looked up the property location and said that I wasn't under any recharge zones or set. At first I said, do I need a permit? He said, of course you need a permit. I said, okay, what do I need to obtain that permit? They said, what's the location? I gave him the location. He said that I had no, um, I guess, recharge zone or wetlands. And <clears throat> we had the conversation. He goes, you can clear it. And I said, so I don't need a permit. He said, you don't need a permit. Um, I said, okay, uh, and I can clear what I have on my survey. And he said, yeah, you want to take, uh, he said something around 25,000 square feet. So you take 10,000 square feet, uh, you take your lot area, 25%. Uh, like he had the calculation. I did the calculation and it matched what I had on my survey of clearable space of 16,305 feet. So I called Jim Revere, who I had clear the land. I went back there with him. We marked out around the property of what we could clear. I did it based on the survey. So I cleared the land. I, did, I did, honestly didn't think I was doing anything wrong. It did seem a little surprising to me that I was able to go back there and clear the land without a permit. Um, second day into it, uh, the code enforcer stopped by. So Jim called me up. I came from my studio. I met with the code enforcer. I let him know what we were doing. Uh, to be honest, I kind of feel like a jerk for doing this because I, I'm not trying to do anything that I'm not supposed to be doing. Uh, I respect my neighbors. I respect the town. I respect the ability to have an artist studio. And by no means am I trying to do something that's going to like, make me look bad in front of everybody while I'm going through this process. So now I'm sitting here with a cleared lot. We did not over clear. Um, we only cut trees. I mean, granted, I cleared what I was, what I was told I was allowed to clear. I cleared what I was allowed to clear based on the survey, but no, I did not get a permit for this. Um, that was not intentional. I tried to get a permit for this or I, asked to get a permit. I was told I didn't need a permit. So I kind of feel like it is a mess messy situation now. I apologize for that. Uh, it's not making me any happier because I feel like it's put, you know, it's going to set all of this back and probably cost me some more money that I'm trying to save. So I, that's all that I can say about that. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, uh, I, 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 there's 
two ways to go, I guess, here. One is to ask the applicant what they want to do in view of this situation. The other is to see whether the planning board should be doing anything, but that's kind of dependent upon what the applicant wants to do. Um, Can I make honestly, a I'm, I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate that. Uh, Randy, yeah, I want to hear, definitely want to hear from you on this. Go ahead. So what, what I would suggest is that we get a real, a real site plan of the vacant lot that shows in, in the portion of the code about uh, accessory structures on vacant lots, it, it asks you to show a hypothetical single family home. So, uh, so what if, I think we need a site plan that shows uh, a hypothetical house that it could be located with the studio. So they have to both be located we need access. We need the site plan to show access from Lafayette. We need to show parking. We need to show a path from the house. And we need to show revegetation. We need to show a clearing line and, it, and determine whether there's revegetation required. It sounds like there is because there's no house proposed at this time. So I would say once we see all of that really on a, you know, on a plot plan, then we can decide whether uh, what needs to be done. That that would be my suggestion. Thanks, Randy. That's uh, a very solid way of going. I, I'd like to know if um, Mr. Catalano, how do you feel about that? Um, I'm just. I guess I, you know. I was reason I'm hung up on the on the question of how much can be cleared for the accessory. Is because revegetation is so expensive. So whatever whatever process this gets, um, you know, w what the end product of this is. I guess I need to know what if the if the clearing that applies for a single family residence would apply for an art studio. Let me ask you this: Is that something? I don't think that's something that we're going to be able to answer right here and now. Um, right. Okay, so maybe. No, Randy? No, it's, it's Thomas. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I have to look into it. Um, uh -huh. I would, I think in some form, I, I liked Randy's suggestion, but in some form we need to know what is the existing clearing on the property at this point and what, and, the, and what would be permitted for an artist studio, um, for an accessory structure like an artist studio, uh, which I would have to research. Uh, I'm going to suggest, and again, uh, Mr. Catalano, if this is an issue, you know, if you have any other ideas, please say so. But I think the thing we need to do with this application tonight is to table it, or adjourn it, give you and uh, Thomas the opportunity to figure out what the law is on this, figure out whether or not you, you know, you, you need to revegetate, uh, figure out whether or not Randy's suggestions are things that need to be incorporated in either a new application or the current application. But um, I, 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 if you disagree with me, tell me, but I think we really can't go any further with this one tonight. So in terms of the application, what would the board, I mean, what would the board be looking for to, you know, to proceed with the, uh, what would they want to see? You want me to reiterate? Randy, uh, go. Uh, Randy, uh, uh, that's, that's a general. Sorry. And then we'll go around. Kathy, we'll go around. Let, let Randy, let Randy lead so us. What I would say is for us to look at it, we need a site plan of the vacant lot that shows a hypothetical single family home that it can be located on the lot with the studio and meet and meet code. Um, that we need to see on that site plan access from Lafayette Place, vehicular access and some amount of parking, either probably one, one at least one space uh, and probably more, probably two. Um, somehow the wastewater is gonna be handled. So we probably need to see a, 
at least a drywall, if not uh, something approved by the health department, but I think at least a drywall. Um, and we need to see the, the clearing. Uh, we need to see the, the edge of clearing and the, cal the clearing calculation existing conditions right now, you know, and that, that way we can decide whether you guys can talk about the law about whether or not a, uh, whatever an artist studio uh, clearing limitation is. But I think we're gonna need that in, in any case, we're gonna need to have a survey with the clearing shown and calculated. So I should apply, to, I should get a survey, John uh, Walsh to come out and get another survey. Let, uh, let's, let, let's go around the table because I, I do want, I don't want the, the board to, you know. Uh, not a, not a the boundary survey is probably fine, but all the ingredients inside the boundary, <laughs> we don't have yet. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, for the clearing. So he can show what was cleared and what wasn't cleared. And also, what wasn't cleared. He needs to show a hypothetical home footprint, the, the studio footprint, uh, a driveway, a couple of parking spaces. He's got to do all that proposed stuff on this revised survey. But just, Eddie, can, you, can you explain why you're suggesting that? Why you want? Uh, let me, let me, that, that's, that's a good question. Let me go around the table. Let me do it in okay. some, somewhat <laughs> organized fashion. Uh, you'll get, you'll get up in a second. But let me start with it. Cause I mean, I wanted Randy to put that out as a, a starting point, but if anybody else is in, cause you know, we are in kind of like an odd situation on this application. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, de I definitely want to hear from everybody. So Ed, please go right ahead. Yeah, no, it's an odd situation and, and an unfortunate one. Um, uh, and I, I think Randy's suggestions sound pretty, you know, pretty good. Uh, although I have to say that I'm a little hung up on uh, kind of understanding what having, you know, what is what what is an accessory structure as the only structure without a primary structure on it uh, on a lot. You know what? What's the law around that? What does that mean? How does it affect, you know, coverage is, and clearing? How is, that yeah, that part we don't know, but we do know that it's allowed. There's a whole code section that describes how it's to be done, and it does say that you have to show you could fit a hypothetical residence okay. on the lot. All right. Well, so if that's the case, then then that is what we should be doing. But in the meantime, I mean, Thomas and Mark can be working on on this and really figuring out what is the law. You know, we, we, just, we just need to know that. All I got, that's it. Thank you, Ed. Luke. Okay. I, 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 yeah, I, I have a few questions because I'm a little, I just want to get more clarity on this. Before I decide anything, I need to uh, understand what, number one, what Ran, why Randy is suggesting that because, I, I mean, the way I see it, Randy, uh, is that what the applicant is looking for is to is to have these two lots considered to be contiguous so that he can put an artist studio on that second lot. So that's why I don't understand. And I know we have this issue of clearing now, but well, so I don't understand why you would want him to submit a site plan to show a hypothetical resident. That's, that's required in the code. If you read, there's a whole code section about putting an accessory structure on a vacant lot. So we but have I that thought, issue. And I thought that, you could do that. if you, you can do that, but you have to show that you could put a principal structure on that lot with the accessory structure. In order to okay, so because that yeah. wasn't mentioned at all in in the report that the planning department that Eric put together. I, I thought it. I thought Eric included that in there. Okay, well then I missed it. Sorry, okay. I, I don't know where. Well, I, I thought Eric was just talking about having the necessity of having two contiguous conforming lots, and they then you know they weren't conforming, but then uh, Thomas cleared up that issue so now that's not an issue the conforming part they are contiguous and they could put a artist studio on that second lot 
Where in Eric's report did it say we need to have a hypothetical residence? Lou, it, uh, I'm looking at the section, it's 255.11.20C. It said, um, let's see, uh, the language about two, two or more contiguous conforming residential lots in common ownership, um, provided that the applicant demonstrates the existence of sufficient buildable area to construct a principal structure on the lot upon which the accessory structure is to be constructed. So I think that but that requirement is there to have a um, accessory structure on a vacant lot. I'm not sure as far as figuring the clearing, whether or not that's- yeah. I, I read that to mean what you just read, Thomas. I read yeah. that to mean that the lot is big enough to hold a, a home. I didn't realize that in order to show that, I thought if you just showed the square footage of the lot, that was enough. No, we no. Realize that you needed to submit a site plan for a hypothetical home. Which so well, Lou, you were building a home. Well, Lou, it goes on to say the idea, and I've, I've worked on some of these before in other towns. The idea is we're going to give you this special permission to put an accessory structure on a vacant lot with no principal building, but. If you know, if we're going to do that, here are the here are the conditions. One, you have to show that you could conform. If you ever sold the lot, you have to you'd have to be able to locate a principal structure in order to sell it and keep the accessory structure you already built. And you're saying that in order to show that, you need to submit a site plan as though you were going to build. Yeah, because other, otherwise he otherwise uh, Nick is is committing himself to to tear that studio down if he ever sells that lot. I'm gonna have to tear it down. Oh, so you can't do that. You can. I mean, uh, generally, we're not allowed to sell the lot if it's over 600 square feet, anyways, unless the pride the new Rick, owner were to get yeah, some. Yeah, I, I was going to introduce that topic too. Artist, yeah. but but re with regard to that, if he ever wants to sell the lot again, that was in Eric's report as well. It said that the new owner would have to show that he could build a house with the existing artist studio on the lot wherever it was built, or if he couldn't, he would have to tear that down in order to build a house. So that's why I'm still having a problem trying to understand why at this point he needs to submit a full site plan review for a hypothetical well, residence. Well, okay. I, I'm suggesting so, it because yeah. it keeps all the options open. If you put the studio right in the middle of the lot where you could never put a, you never put a house on it, you're committing yourself to having to tear it yeah, down. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. All, all I'm saying is, and I guess I'm arguing from the applicant's point of view, and, and this is, I'm not arguing, I'm just really trying to understand so that I can make a better decision. Uh, the, the point is that if he puts that studio in a corner of the property, do you really need a full site plan review in order to determine that you can that you can build a house on there well, could you just do it in terms of and then if it ever comes to that it's it's the new owner's problem if you, okay this i think this is getting outside the scope of the clearing issue <laughs> and also like I, I think we can in determining the appropriate legal requirement here for the for the clearing and um where the clearing, you know, what the appropriate permitted maximum is, I, I think we'll have to figure out this whole house issue, but it, it seems like it's getting hung up there. So why not, I'll look at it and- yeah, I, 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 I agree. I, I, I mean, look, I, I want us to all be able to, you know, have our uh, opinion heard on this, but I, I mean, my opinion is ultimately, it's something that council is gonna have to sit down with council for the applicant and, uh, figure it out whether randy's idea is used or somebody else or another idea has come up with that's a separate story okay so let me just finish up first of all another question for the applicant 
isn't this lot uh, you haven't really purchased this lot. You you entered into a contract which is contingent on you getting approval for this studio. Is that correct? We did purchase a lot. Oh, three, you did. Two, okay, two months ago. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. I okay. I, I, that would have been my other mistake is clearing somebody else's lot. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. I, 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 no, I, I tried. I tried, to, I tried to do it legit. I. I, I <laughs> you, you'd be having. Yeah, right. I can't, I can't tell you how. Conversation with a different body. I can't tell you how bad I feel already for where I am right now. It's. All right. Well, look. I think the just finally, just to finish up. I think this clear. Obviously, what everybody is saying, this clearing issue needs to be resolved. Uh, I, you know, I, uh, I, I sympathize. I think you you made a big mistake. You don't just call somebody and take their, you know, even though it's part of the uh, whoever it is that you call. I would get something in writing before you. Anyway, uh, this needs to be cleared up. However, everyone thinks it, it, we should go with Thomas's guidance. But and then I guess we'll take up your application after this issue is uh, put to bed. Ian, oh, yeah. thank you, Luke. Ian. Uh, know? Yeah, I, I think I think ultimately, you know, I'm going to lean on on Thomas on this one. I think Randy brings up a good point. Um, you know, I, I think the idea here, frankly, deals with accessory structures that aren't artist studios because that brings up a whole separate issue of, of who could buy an artist studio, which which complicates things. I don't think this section of the code, you know, was talking about that specifically. I think obviously if the applicant wanted to merge these properties, this would go away, but I don't think that they want to do that. So um, I'll wait to hear more definitively from Thomas um, on what to do here. But I think the concept of having a, a large artist studio um, in and of itself would be problematic, even if you could fit a house in terms of a, a future transfer of property, unless it went to another artist. So I think clearly at some point we're going to need to see, um, know what the, the clearing situation is, what's allowed and to demonstrate, you know, somehow on a survey what exists and what can exist if this project is to proceed. Um, as, far, as far as whether they have to have to actually have to demonstrate a house or not, Again, I'll wait to hear more concretely from Thomas on that. Thanks, Ian. Kathy. Good point, Ian. No, he's, 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 um, this is why I wanted to go around the board. Go ahead, Kathy. Well, I, uh, I have a lot of empathy for Nick. I know he didn't mean to make a mistake, um, but this, this throws a big wrench in the works from my point of view. And I think we do have to just, you know, Thomas is going to have to spend some time with the code and, uh, and I want to thank Randy because, you know, Randy, you know, is a professional planner and he knows the code pretty well too. So I'm glad that he picked up on, uh, you know, what Eric's kind of alluded to in the memo, but um, I'm afraid, and it doesn't have anything to do with, uh, you know, we know you're an artist. We know, you, you know, I'm familiar with your work. It's great, but I think, now that we're in this position, it changes the groundwork under uh, on you know through which we're meant to evaluate this. So we've got two issues here. Um, I think Randy brings up really good points when he talks about access, especially because I know a lot of your work is big and you've got lumber and so forth that has to come in. So you've got to be able to you know have a truck navigate the space and all the rest. So I think you are going to have to lay that out you know, where the septic is going to go and all that stuff doesn't seem to be relevant to the artist's studio, but it will be to a future residence on that lot, especially if you want the size of the studio that you're requesting now. All of that's got to fit in in, in some way to this the shape of this lot. So I think, um, you know, with the guidance of, of the planning department and, and Thomas, uh, you can probably come up with something that'll work, but I'm afraid this has become more complex than any of us would have liked. Sorry for that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> stuff happens, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sharon, well, you will uh, close yeah. the conversation this week. Close the conversation. Yeah. yeah, I don't have much to add. I mean, I think, um, you know, whether he needs to show a house or not, we'll wait for Thomas, but I definitely think he needs to show, you know, the, the access and, um, 
you know, parking and um, definitely septic. Um, you know, whether the house has to be on there or not, I'll leave that to Thomas. Um, and we obviously need to know what the clearing uh, allowance is. So that's all I have. And that, I, those, those, that, that, that access uh, issue is, thank you for raising that. That's a very, very important point. You know, regardless of, of what ultimately uh, Thomas, uh, you know, tells us needs to be there. Uh, you got to be able to get on and off the property. So, yeah. Can I ask one? So I'm very happy to do whatever needed. Um, I'm happy to get a site plan um, if that's if it makes it easier, even if we don't necessarily need it, if that makes it clearer for everybody, I'm happy to do so. And in that, basically, I would I'm just trying to get it straight. I would basically show where a residence would go, where the septic unit would go, where the studio is going to be and the entrance to the house and the entrance to the studio. Well, uh, let's, let's put it this way. The, the, uh, that may be maybe not. We're going to leave it up to Thomas to figure out what you need to show. Randy has given some, what I think, and members of the board obviously think, is uh, some pretty good guidance as to a way to go. Whether that's the way to go, that's why we have lawyers. And uh, but, Okay, and, but and, I would like to and do that's the... why you have a lawyer as well. Because well, I don't want to get, I don't want a too much lawyer, lawyer. If that makes everybody What's happy, I'll just that? do it. <laughs> like I would just happier just to supply that if that made everybody happy. Like I, like I said, look, we're going to, uh, uh, I think the board, you know, we, we, we're going to put it in to Thomas's able hands. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, I, I think as a threshold issue, we need to first figure out what's the allowable clearing for an accessory structure on an adjacent vacant lot, which is not, I'm not aware of what that would be at this point. Um, so once we get that idea, then we can discuss the other issues. And if it is too much of the clearing, then it's just a matter of revegetating, correct? Correct. Gotcha. Okay. Unless there was going to be a residential building and then that clearing, as long as it's within that scope of the survey is allowed, then we're whatever. Yeah, you, I yeah, think I you would need to get a building permit, but yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah I, again, I don't want to get ahead. I don't want Thomas to have to get ahead of himself so right. that you know right now what you need to do. You will learn soon enough what Thank you. you need to do. Yeah. Thank you. I'm just going to sit back for now and not do anything. <laughs> and with that, Merry Christmas, Nick. It is, it is Christmas. It is Christmas. It is Hanukkah. It is Kwanzaa. It is uh, the end of a year that none of us are going to soon forget. Nope. One way or another. You, <laughs> not just for me. <laughs> so, um, all right. Well, we, anyway, so with that, we will close this discussion. Uh, pending uh, for uh, let me actually make sure your council is good with that, Mark. Yeah, thank you. That's all. All sounds sensible. Okay, very good, very good. Bye, Nick. Bye. Happy holidays. Thank you so Bye. much. Happy holidays. See you soon. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, see you soon. <laughs> and, well, uh, as soon as the process allows. Yeah. All right, and with that, it is nine eighteen. And again, uh, I, I, you know, I, I gave all those credits and kudos at the beginning, but everybody, uh, it's really been a, a, a great pleasure uh, this year, um, despite the bizarre <laughs> way in which we're doing things, not doing them, but the physical. <laughs> so the way we do them is not bizarre. It is absolutely according to, to the rules. So uh, does anyone have anything else they want to say? I'm just, watching the, I'm just watching the sexual activity that's going on in Randy's bed. I'm <laughs> the clothes? I think, think it's a good point to close. <laughs> 2021, can't come fast enough. Yeah. All right. Let's everybody have a great holiday. Have a wonderful people. holiday. Happy Happy holiday. Holiday. Yeah. I miss all you people. I Happy miss the holidays, everybody. See you in January. We're adjourned. Bye. What are you?